Hello, and welcome to Spotlight, the official podcast of Grapple. I'm Benna. I'm Gareth. And I'm Matty. That's just the uh, the three of us today. JP couldn't uh, make the show tonight, but Gareth's uh, filled in on uh, on late notice. Might have a uh, special guest uh, joining us in a uh, in a little while. And uh, yeah, Matty's been uh, the holding the uh, the fort with me on the uh, on the pre show. He couldn't miss an uh, an opportunity to get some uh, some more moaning in before the uh, the big weekend. Um, <laughs> you, know what's great? you know what's great though? I'm the less AEW guy, and I've moaned the least more than you. So like, <laughs> it's just you know. <laughs> oh well, if you missed it, we see we're back together. Because literally 24 hours ago, the three of us recorded the uh, <laughs> All In 2018 uh, review uh, on the uh, the flashback on the uh, on the Patreon as well. So we're uh, we're reunited. I feel like that gave me a bit of bit of like I don't know positivity is maybe not the words, but I don't know a bit of context, a bit of like okay, we're getting our or I said I said to you yesterday at the end of the show, I kind of put me in a uh, in a more positive frame of mind. No, not you, Gareth. Um, or maybe no. we don't know. Maybe Gareth's going to come here and tell us how great the build to All In is. So. You know, um, maybe didn't need nah, that. Nah, 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 nah. It was a, it was very, it was very much the Rhodes family taking me back to shattered dreams. I think uh, on that one there, <laughs> uh, going on that, uh, going on the uh, all in 2018 because it was a uh, just took me back, took me back to a time you know of of hope and mm. expectation and um, you know mm. the extent to which we're going to have this fantastic promotion maybe years down the line with tremendously booked storylines and, you know, great wrestling out there and lovely detailed angles and things like that that, that pay off uh, pay off further down the line. I guess that's what we're going to talk about now, isn't it, on our uh, <laughs> build-up to Wembley? No? No, it was, a, it was a time when a much younger and more hopeful Gareth was like, you know what I'm going to do? Start an app. <laughs> that's not 2018. It's <laughs> what was that guy thinking? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, what's your memories of 2018, Matt? As we were uh, we were talking about yesterday, it was uh, a fun time in all our lives, right? It was nostalgia. This was me watching every indie company under the sun, wasn't it? As I say, alphabet mm. soup. Just just put three letters in front of me and I'll watch it. No, I said who's in the mm. federation. I'll just watch that and just yeah, loving mm. it and. The uh, the bear for the book, which I can't find at the minute, Benno, which I've got it. Uh, I've got to find that before they uh, going to be long time this does that. Matty literally yeah. had like a book that was like his bible of his star. Rate. So again, talking grapple, this predated grapple because there was a point I remember when you had a little project where you're going to add. Yeah. <laughs> Gareth's back in the in the background here, but I want to kind of keep him on screen with this lovely smile. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here in the video version. But um <laughs> I love that picture. <laughs> it is. Two Gareth's. There we go. Better. <laughs> Hi, Gareth. Four dozen spaces like Survivor Series 93. I've, I've, I've just got a black black screen there. I can't see it. I was I was gonna say I promise oh. I didn't just uh, I didn't just uh, bad news brown you there and just get off because of because uh, you were like slagging off the idea of starting the app back in the Back in the day, like, but uh, I thought that was <laughs> very, idea. very timely. That was <laughs> a great time idea. We were just saying, Matty was doing it before. He was doing the app before the app. He had his book. He had his. Uh, he had his. Yeah. He had his notes in there of every every star rating you ever had. I don't think you ever managed to actually get it converted and put on the grapple app at any point, Matty. No. But you know, trend set of it. It was every four star match entered the book so the minimum if you're in the book the minimum was four stars that that, that match was and then i had a little <laughs> side i've got the little side book of like i done a kenny omega project as i said on the uh, all in the uh, 2018 podcast once i seen him because i'd seen his name written down and talked about on twitter and such my mind was blown like i'm still a fan to this day but when i first mm-hmm. seen him i thought he actually arrested that lived up to the hype here and then i just went back and watched all his old uh you know, G1 matches and stuff like that. Not even like the, the the famous ones, really. Just any I could get my hands on. And yeah, wild times, Ben. Wild times, mate. Different worlds. Like, it's like we did the yeah. um, obviously the, the other plug we did, as well as the All In 2018 flashback review, where we went through the entire show, talked how good you know that uh, that Cody and Nick Aldis match was, and how oh, you know, yeah. it was very uh, reminiscent of today's Cody, I think, and uh, <laughs> you know, just a different belt that his uh, dad did win this time, not one he uh, he uh, he never won. Same shit though, uh, but it's great, it's fucking great. But like all those trips down memory lane, we had a fun game, didn't we? We, we figured out uh, how many wrestlers on the show ended up in AEW versus who didn't. So, Pretty even-ish number, wasn't it? But like more than you would think. Um, ended up uh, landed in a in a in a W and a few that were stragglers that were uh, probably a uh, a bit of a surprise as well. But like 
yeah, covering it was like just learning. All. It's like the I think the biggest one for you, Matt, was that Damien Priest was it all in. Like yeah, people the zero that? hour battle yeah. royal, really. <laughs> <laughs> like I said to you, did you think he's like backstage with the other chats with Rey Mysterio going, oh, I remember all in. Wasn't it a great day? Like <laughs> what a surreal thing. Really As you said on it, that was like a different human being, isn't it? Now it's like a totally mm. different, like and after get recast, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the woman say... fresh prince of Bel Air, isn't it? Like same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say though, eh, Bello, you know, the, the main thing I took from that eh, podcast last night was your was your particular dislike of a certain wrestler. Am I right, Gareth? That he didn't like at all. I say in a eh, Matt Cross, Bello, what, what was your beef with him? Just <laughs> getting overblown. <laughs> we were happy. We were happy. <laughs> you, 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 you were nasty. There was spite in some of them words. Like the, no. just, just plain sentences that just, just sounded a bit nasty. Just a bit nasty. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he had a good little Lucha Underground run. That's all I'm saying. You know, it was just, you know, I had no problem with him going over on the night, baby based on over. But, you know, that was fine. That was fine. There's more people on that show who have nasty words about than, uh, than Matt Cross. There is, uh, Definitely. there is also that as well. But, yeah, we were, it was, it was just fun to see it again and kind of just, yeah, remind yourself of like, where the company came from, where the world was in 2018, you know, five years, again, half a decade ago. On the podcast, Gareth was saying, wasn't he, Matt? He's like, oh, you know, wasn't that long ago? Yeah, it fucking was. Like, <laughs> we're just old. That's the <laughs> debate, though. Is it or not? Is it or not? That's the debate we always have with time. No, 1992 to 1997, Matt. You tell me what happened in them five years. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them 92 to our foundation versus America. <laughs> Different Wild. world. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but yeah, we can't cover all that. But like the 2018 like factoid that I, me and JP most enjoyed, I'm sure he'd be putting over if he was uh, if he was here was on the uh, observe this and um, that we also did to, it as like a companion piece to the flashback review where we looked at the the news week that was um, in uh, August uh, September 20 uh, 2018. And when we looked at that, honest to God, we play patrons know when we do observe this we play a game called control f jeff and the fun of the game is just figuring out where in the world jeff jarrett is at any given time in 92 he might be you know somewhere in the southern u.s he might be in mexico he might be here he might be in wwe he's fucking everywhere in 2018 it was the most hilarious thing like literally every second story felt like it mentioned jeff jarrett he main event to triple mania he was helping get fight going he was uh suing go go for the global force tapes he was suing anthem him and Billy Corgan were thinking of starting a wrestling promotion. There was an episode of Monday Night Raw. He was on there as a talking head. And then the week after, as we found out when we did the flashback, he also appeared at All In. Like, 2018 was the year that Jeff became Jeff, I think. He, it's his purest form of Billy bullshit, getting everything he possibly can out of the, uh, the wrestling world. Like, and that's it. We've got Jeff to thank because he's now he's now at AW. He's in charge of their international touring and stuff. And... He's given us this As Gareth said, though, yeah. on there, like, five years ago, he was frowned upon. Now he's, mm. like, a, a regular every single week, though, on AW Telly. <laughs> it's fucking bizarre. <laughs> what world are we living in? It was finished, mm. wasn't it? It was just a guy who was done. <laughs> like, yeah. now, he's, now he's on telly every week. It's so weird. It's so weird. <laughs> Classic, classic, and no fingers in many pies. And oh, legend! The, the, yeah. the more pies you've got fingers in, then the more, the, 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 the more you're going to land on your feet at the end of the day, aren't you? Like, and fucking hell, he is a uh, always comes yeah. up to Bella and the roses, doesn't he? Good old. The world's Jeff. best at a job interview is what I always say. He's that person you know in work who's dead good at getting the interview, and then they get in the job and they just sit in the office with the feet up all day. That's my <laughs> that's my picture of what Jeff does every single time. Once he's in, he's thinking of the next thing, isn't he? He's uh, yeah. he's making phone calls, he's sorting sorting else out. But uh, yeah, he's a uh, he's a he's a great man, and yeah, we can hear us uh, talk all of that stuff over on the uh, on the Patreon. There's going to be a few things uh, popping up there as well. Obviously, into next month, we're going to be doing a uh, Dealers Choice Month. Um, again, we have to. A popular demand that's going to be uh, coming up in uh, in September. There should be a little bonus uh, dynamite review later this week with uh, with me and Steph. As tonight, we kind of I don't know we're doing a spotlight, but it's more of a bit of a weekend preview because we're going to preview everything going on this weekend. So that'll kind of take the place of the uh, the weekend show with me uh, making the trip down to uh, to London tomorrow. But with that said, it's coming, lads. It's London. It's all in it. It's going to be on Sunday. We're almost there. <laughs> it's uh, Yeah, you guys are going to be talking on the pre-show about uh, sorting the petrol and stuff like that. What a day, what a day out we're going to have, Gareth. You sent the, uh, the email out. We know where we are. We're, uh, we're, we're, we promise we'll get people out the door in time for Tony Khan's ridiculous pre-show that has doors open at, uh, at 3.30. But yeah, great, uh, great afternoon we're going to have at, uh, at Trinity. And possibly 
night after if anyone fancies joining us for a bit of karaoke. Bring your uh, your ticket stub if those things still exist. Um, just show us your phone. Um, I was going to say QR uh... code on your phone. <laughs> yeah, both both for for the people who've been to the daytime and crucially as well in case people have missed this. If you just at Wembley, um, Trinity have said they're going to let people in um, for free. So. You know, just show your uh, show your ticket on your phone that you uh, you went to all in. You'll be able to come uh, party with us after the show if you're going to miss the uh, the daytime uh, hijinks. But yeah, it's going to be a wild day, got it? Yeah, I can't wait. And that's where we're at right now. Just like can't wait for just see everybody. Really, it's just going to be mm. like just going to be a boss weekend with the Rev Pro show the day before. Just like getting to go and see that. Just go and like mix and just see so many people that I haven't seen from like shows in your, in like what feels like ages now. Obviously see you lot, see loads of people who've like bought tickets to come down for for, for the event and um, like come to Trinity and things. Just meet a lot of people there who are just like names in the chat and things like Jay, like Jamesy, I feel like I, I feel like you message Jamesy every day. I've never met him in person ever in my life. That's mad. I can't, I've never I, 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 I can't wait to meet. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to meet Jamesy for the first time. Like that's that's something that I'm uh, really looking forward to. Like say, so it's just going to be it's it's just going to be the boss. Like uh, um, that's mm-hmm. that's all I'm thinking about. I'm not even thinking about the show. I'm just thinking about um, having a laugh with everybody and just having that that big tick get together kind of thing. That's what it just feels like to me. Like over a, I, over that. I two can't wait to see him. Can't wait to see him, Gareth. Like getting photos with everyone, you know, signing. Out. It's good. Marty's gonna have a great day out. Like, oh, I can't me? wait. Yeah, you. <laughs> oh me, Johnny. What are you talking to someone else then? <laughs> meeting all our patrons, meeting all the listeners, knowing people off Twitter by name. Like we said in the pre-show, you're gonna have some. You're gonna have nicknames for people. People are gonna be uh, get to meet Matty in real life. This is uh, that, you're the you're the big draw here, mate. No, no, none of that, none of that. But as uh, in the Discord, he was saying there's like about fifty thousand Chris's, so they're all getting shortened, lengthened, <laughs> nicknames, surnames. It's gonna be like a, it's gonna be a task in itself. That me remember everyone's name, like so. Yeah, but as Gareth mm. said, can't wait for it, boys. Honestly, I've been, as you said, as it's getting nearer, it's just the excitement, or just ready for it, ready to go. Like I can't wait. I've just got visions of you, like you've got somehow like finding your way into like the wrestlers' dressing room in Wembley or <laughs> something like that, or just like finding your way into a box or something like that. With He's someone, gonna have like, a story, isn't he? He's gonna have a story. <laughs> someone's gonna, someone's gonna happen to you, hundred percent. It's just fucking bizarre, like totally bizarre. I'm, just, I'm here for it. Yeah, well that's it. We'll uh, we'll see what happens, boys. It's just as you say, though, everyone to meet everyone here, the listeners especially, and everyone coming to the show. Mm. Just cannot wait for it. Cannot wait. Definitely. So, yeah, we'll hopefully uh, see everybody uh, there, if not uh, at the at Trinity at, on Wembley Way or potentially uh, after the show as well. So, yeah, definitely uh, come along and, uh, and say hi at uh, any point that you uh, you are able. But, yeah, on that note, we should uh, we should get into the uh, the main show. Like I say, a bit more uh, structured like a bit of a weekend show. Patrons uh, know the deal here as we're going to spend the majority of the show doing our uh, All in Wembley uh, preview. Um, and maybe going a little bit through uh, some... Uh, Notes from Tony Khan's conference call today that I wasn't invited to. But anyway, uh, we'll get into uh, to that as well. But before we get there, we as a, a traditional weekend show style, just uh, with that being the main stuff, we'll get to some, I don't know, minor news stories, Matt, that are probably worth just uh, getting out okay. of the way. I think, you know, yeah. You forget I've seen this list. I can see this list. So, you know. <laughs> I, re- I reckon, like, you know, me and JP have a strict rule, Matty. It's 30 seconds per story. So, you know, of course. we don't need to, uh, to spend uh, too much time on uh, on these uh, on these little minor matters. But as we get into the uh, the day's news and, uh, and everything that's uh, been going on outside of AW first, before we get into the uh, AW news headlines, um, completely unrelated to events this weekend. Um, Matt, <laughs> have you seen this uh, this news headline that's, uh, that's come out? Uh, apparently, a uh, WDB have sold, uh, and this is generous, over 90,000 tickets for the uh, the two-day WrestleMania 40 shows uh, coming up. Um, Now, that might sound like, oh, that's really impressive. It is, obviously. (laughs) Um, But you do need to break that down. It is across two nights. uh, Do they have uh, been sure, though, in the press release that you've put out to say it's surpassed? Last year's gross of 21 million and, t- and ticket and venue of uh, 20 million. Uh, but obviously, uh, last year's show in uh, California had 63,000 and 64,000, apparently, um, on each night. Tony Khan had some uh, some comments about uh, WWE's uh, attendances on his uh, on his conference call today. But obviously, got a lot of packages going on and stuff like that. But there you go. There's your boys. JP, that JP will be, if he was on here, he'd be, you know, saying, you know, when we do the, uh, the records, we do the top five. Um, I think. 
Do we be number one again now, Matty? Is, is that how this works? Are they the uh, the highest uh, attendance? Are you going to be one of them Twitter people who tells me that that counts uh, across two nights? Because I feel Have like I entire, <laughs> is there other entire G1 tours or, you know what I mean, entire house show tours that they count? <laughs> Raw for the entire year does it? Does it number <laughs> well? we just combine all them? It does nowadays with the getting over 10,000 a week again, yeah. <laughs> but I've just, you've obviously got wind, haven't you, that it's, uh, you know, the rumoured Jimmy VJ show match. That's what's selling these tickets, as I put it. I think so, you know. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, <laughs> there's a reason for this, Bello. <laughs> mm, of course. <laughs> Are you considering going, Matt? Any uh, any any thoughts on that? I've, I've had a few texts, to be honest. A few uh, a few old uh, schoolmates have uh, sent me just pictures of the packages on offer, and it's it's a bit mm. too early this year. But mm. in the next couple of years, it's got to be done. I think it's actually just got to be done, boys. It's got to just be go and go and just go to a. Uh, to a mania, but obviously, you know, with Roman's demise coming this year, WrestleMania, it's he, he might just be an attraction then every year that I go and you know, but I have seen him have an eye in London uh, a couple of months mm. back, so you know, yeah, I'm happy with that. But yeah, good day. Uh, I'll promise how quick though. you think it's going to be, Gareth, before the uh, the very they, they find a way to do Wembley or they, they literally build a stadium from the, the ground up to her uh, to get this. There's no coincidence that they put this they put this news out this week, like, of course, of course, they've timed us. Uh, Oh, they're going to go all death match and just like get a massive field in Texas or something like that that they can get two hundred thousand people along to or something just to like blow the numbers out of the water. But just like classic WWE, you have to get that into the news cycle just at, at ninety thousand level like in in, in the week. And, <laughs> but like it's just it just makes you laugh because it's pathetic, isn't it? It's just it's, it it just it just shows how it just shows how fucking petty and pathetic they still are even though they're on like on the up and things are going well and all that they've still got to still got to can't let it lie you know kind of they've still got to try and you know we're, we're number one still like you know even though everybody knows they are they've still got to try and uh try and get that uh talk out there just you're fuming you've uh you've let the side down matty we're spending hundreds of pounds on it uh, and going to all in and uh you know not just donating it to the uh the cause just buy a philadelphia ticket just to get one you know oh. I told you, my money in the bank ticket costs more than me all in, so I'm, I'm, I've won for the year with me uh, show. I love that your logic these days. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> but can I just say I'm throwing in there as a, uh, as a rebound and a rebuttal? Do you think the two WrestleManias will be built better than this fucking all in show coming up? He will, won't he? Because <laughs> he already planted the seeds now, which he should have done. So let's just move just... on. <laughs> <laughs> We can't even argue this week. Oh, well. no, Probably, no, no. yeah. The only, the only time I can get a win in here. At the, at the end of the at the end of the day, we talked about that on the um the Patreon show yesterday about like the all in twenty eighteen review. They built that show fucking better on YouTube. Without telly, than yeah, this Adam. Been, <laughs> than this has been built on fucking five hours of TV for three months. Like so, yeah. I don't I don't think there's an argument there. It's a big big tick in the victory box for you there, Matty. That one, I think. <laughs> but as we talked about, WWE's only got good now because you know because AW exists. You know, it's funny well, that because like Matty right. Matty yeah. thinks of us as the AW defenders, where it's like the the world, especially the YouTube world, <laughs> does not see us in that light at all. Um, is what's going on? Oh, but you know, we got our AW t-shirts on. You know, if they had have risen all ships, you know, do they might not have tried so they uh, tried the last mile. But on that note, the other news story definitely wants to bring up while you're here, here Matty, before we get into all the uh, the AEW stuff. Couldn't have your own Matt without uh bringing it up as uh you made to Adam Copeland, uh, Edge, um, or I'm maybe torn. we'll just be known as Adam Copeland these days. Confirmed the end of his uh, WWE contract, said he's torn about the future, just like you. Um, obviously had his uh, his last alleged match on uh, on SmackDown with uh, with Sheamus on Friday. Uh, JP wasn't buying it at the time, but I I'm pretty bullish of where I think uh, Edge is gonna uh, gonna end up. But yeah, he's uh, he's definitely getting to that point where it's like you see in the news story say things like, "Well, only Edge knows what's what's gonna come next." You know, it's it's totally up to him, which does sound Gareth. For the for the warriors in us, like the last words of like you know Brian Danielson and there were others like that, uh, Cesaro, where it's like, oh yeah, we think he's resigning with WWE, and then the news cycle becomes, oh well, you know, he's going to take some time off, and then it becomes, well, he knows he'll be back when he wants, and then he turns up on AW TV. The day is coming, Matthew. The day yeah. is coming. I I'm a, I agree with you, Benno. At first, I was like, he's like obviously angling for a, a bigger deal, bumper deal, you know, going off against each other, but. The more I'm thinking about it and reading into it, he just wants that last run with Christian, doesn't he? And then <laughs> I've seen that with Will. He wants that last um, that run with Christian and FTR, doesn't he? He just wants to try something new. But 
Mm. Yeah, it's I'm gonna be proper Natalie and Brulia torn about this one, boys. Uh. It's uh, <laughs> it's gonna be like I what I bet I'm gonna I just hope he does a Christian to you where like you come round and but I can't see that as much with Edge to be fair. Like so do, do you, do you know see what, me though? being like, an edge like, guy Gareth? I, I, I don't know because I like Adam Copeland, Adam on the podcast yeah, I used to do and stuff like that. Like, yeah, true. I, I, true. I like I like him as a fella. Like, he's is he seems like a sound fella and like he's got a good like sense of humor and stuff like that. So maybe if he's just uh, taken out of been edge trying to have best match ever against Randy Orton for ninety five fucking hours and things like that at the time, and he's just like goes and tries to have a bit of fun and stuff like that. That'll be um. That'll be that'll be all right. I t- tell you what, if we're uh, if we sat there on Sunday and fucking Metalinka suddenly uh, suddenly comes banging through the Wembley speakers, I'll be on my, I'll be stood on my chair, mate. I'll be fucking loving that. <laughs> that'd be that'd be amazing. Or, or or if we get Luchasaurus tearing off the mask and it's actually Edge. Here you be. go. Fuck, I love that, Gareth. I love that. One of your top five themes of all time, as we uh, as we well know yeah, from the, uh, the five to one we did. Yeah. I don't know. I just. Uh, Carl, I, re- I, I, I did turn the corner on Christine. You are right, Matt. And when we did the Christine yeah. and TNA thing, like I even liked them then. It was just maybe the 2015, or how many years it was in between. Um, I was on a Christian fan. Do, do, do you know what? For so long. <laughs> like, for so long. Tony, Tony's defo book and hardest versus etching Christian. I was just about to say, that's bad, though. Come on. He can't be doing that. He won't be able to do himself, it. will he? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if it's like that, it's like oh, it'll, be, it'll be him and Christian against the FTR. You know the FTR. That's what it there. is. Yeah, 100%. they were training partners for him, weren't they? When he was uh, when he was looking to come back, but oh, feels like that'll be the death knell of my interest in AEW. <laughs> think in general, if Edge turns, that's why I wanted to probably use them. <laughs> like if I was talking neutrally, and you look at like you know the next thing we're gonna get into when we get into the AEW stuff, you look at Collision, and especially this week's fucking Collision. I mean, if no one else is willing to play with Punk, I don't know what Punk. I know Punk and Edge have uh, busted heads before, wasn't there that uh, house show match once where I think uh, Edge had been uh, out with Jericho watching the uh, the hockey or something like that, um, and he had a few few too many drinks the night before. So Christian, uh, so Punk decided just to not tag them in the match the entire time. It's like some kind of like, like teach them a lesson about <laughs> trying to wrestle when they've been out the night before. Um, so I don't know, maybe the beef holds over from then, or maybe he's had. He'll remember it, won't he? Let's be honest, if anyone's going to. remember everything like that. But he could add something to Collision is the only pushback I would give, but it's like, that's me bargaining with myself because I still don't want to fucking see it. I don't want to see Edge, as Robert said a few times, on a fucking bar stool looking 700 years old doing one of his serious <laughs> dramatic promos he's done in this WWE. Because this WWE run, come on, Matt. Even you've got to admit, it's not been good. Overall, it's not that. been good. No, Even if you've that. liked bits of it more than me. It's not been yeah. good. I've said the, the Seth trilogy and the Finn Balor I quit match is probably the only and the Orton greatest match ever. Ignore the tagline at the backlash was good. Hard everything else, <laughs> everything else has been a dis, you know a disappointment or just you know not you not what you expect. As I said, yeah, he's old there, he's off for years, but that can't be. You can't just go off this and ignore what he done in the in the past. What everyone seems to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I know you can only go on what you've seen. That's like, fucking years ago. That's why. Yeah, it's twenty you, years ago. <laughs> it still holds weight, mate. It's a career. You know what I mean? It's it's a fucking full career. But yeah, it will put people off this latest run. But yeah, and he's, he's old, nearly fifty, isn't he? Or he is fifty. So you know, we'll just see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm leaving it like you, Ben. I think he will end up there at some point. There we go. Well, I, maybe I, li- I liked him when he teamed with Hogan that little period. I liked him when he first came in and was budget. Oh, that's thing. three weeks. That's as nice as I can be about Edge. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> hell, <laughs> it is the well, next one, isn't it? So we'll see if you like. You better, better fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see what happens. <laughs> well, on that note, um, yeah, moving over to things uh, AEW uh, as we kind of uh, move towards the uh, the main events of uh, things today. There was, uh, and this is definitely not the main event of this podcast uh, this week. Uh, there was collision at the weekend. Uh, obviously, we covered uh, Dynamite on the on the proper weekend show on uh, on Friday, um, and collision also happened. Um, that is your extent of my kind of thoughts on collision this week. There was a punk fucking angle at the start of the show with Joe where. He look. He did possibly the worst GTS he's done in his AEW run to him. Dressed up as the Golden Vampire, which is an inside joke from his indie slash ROH run. Uh, and that was Punk on the show. He was gone. And then after that, wall to wall jobber matches, load of inconsequential shite, a very good Darby Allen and Christian match, which I don't think can really uh, save this thing. And yeah, overwhelmingly 
got crushed by what UFC 292 preliminary card that was on Saturday night, and apparently NFL preseason has started as well. Uh, you could use all those excuses, um, as the show did 476,000 viewers and a 222,000 in the 18 to 49. And fair enough, but I mean, that's just Saturdays, isn't it? That's the uh, the path they chose to uh, to go down was to run Saturdays. and it's probably only going to get get worse from here. I watched this show, and I know you've not had the chance to uh, to see it yet, Gareth. And you could see it from watching it as they wheeled out like so. Like, even the likes of Dalton Castle, who did not really establish on, on TV, and then they started like wheeling out these job matches, and then there was a surprise job match with Juice Robinson and the lads that, in a weird way, kind of peaked the quarter a little bit, and then it dropped right down again. There was so many opportunities on this show for people to just click off. Like they literally. God, it gave people an open goal. Like I, I, I'm not built like that. If I'm watching a wrestling show, I'll watch it. If I turn it off, I'll turn it off and I'll be go to bed. That can happen. But I'm not going to flip channels. There were a million points in the show where I was like, you're one of those Americans who's got your finger on the clicker. Why would you stick around? And yeah, it feels wild because like I thought last week's collision was, you know, a little bit of an ex expose of like the formula with the, the half hour main event and it felt a bit dull. And then this week, take FTR out of the equation and only put Punk on for a few minutes. And it kind of shows you what's left behind it. It was just very inconsequential and not of show befitting of uh, the week before Wembley. I mean, I think the most telling thing for me is the fact that, like, I haven't seen it yet um, sort of thing. So I don't know, you know, I can't comment on the detail or what was, like, uh, on there. But I think the most telling thing for me is that it's, it's a week before Wembley. And, mm. like... I, it's not like I've been off Twitter and stuff and I've got no idea what happened on the show because nothing happened of any consequence that anybody's talking about to any kind of like major degree. You'd have thought there'd have been something big or something major that like happened there that you'd have had, you know, the, mm -hmm. something just to put them kind of like in the social media news cycle, something, something to get wet people's appetite for the, for the week later. But, uh, Clearly, clearly not. And like uh, again, this kind of like just with me being behind on on, on AW going into it, it, to me, it just feeds into the thing of the build. And I know obviously you have had plenty of criticism over the couple of weeks. You know, I think I was on here a couple of weeks ago with with, with similar criticisms. But there's just I can't believe that we're going into a Wembley show and I haven't been chomping at the bit to watch the TV and make sure that I'm totally up to date with it and things things like that. I should be like so embroiled in these storylines going into in, into what's happening, but there's 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 nothing there to make it's me like, be like I've got to get up and watch that or I've got to sit up and watch that live kind of kind of thing. Not in the slightest. Doesn't even cross my mind. Mm. That's the thing. It's like even when there's been like you know, I, I don't like to use WDB as a positive example. Sorry, Matt, but like you know, there's been maybe not all the time, but like a lot of the time when it came to like WrestleMania season, you'd be like, okay, it's the Raw and SmackDowns and the lead up. Even as someone who wasn't watching year round, I'd make sure it was appointment viewing for that reason because it was leading up to their biggest show. I'm like, even if you know. And I'm sure we're going to have uh, that conversation in a bit. If you want to disagree with us, that oh, Wem Wembley should be treated like a Saudi show. We'll explain to you in a bit. We'll give you some fucking knowledge on why that's not the case in a bit. But even if you're one of those people, like, it's still a week out, like, from a pay-per-view. You want to, like, kind of get things going and heat things up. And it, it felt like, a, for me, it was an expose of where we are, but more what Collision is at this point. Because it's been a really nice little show, but a fully signed up collider. I very much enjoyed it. But the... And the strengths of it have been its own little world that we can all enjoy. But then the negatives have been, well, yeah, because it's like a very small group of CM Punk authorized personnel and the people who, you know, are in the feuds that are even, you know, if you can call them feuds going into, going into all in are all over on Dynamite. And there wasn't, I was looking at it, like I was 10 minutes in the show, I said it in our Discord. What do we think is actually going to happen tonight that could build all in? And it was like, well, no, it's probably going to be a lot of inconsequential stuff with, I love Ricky Starks, he's been great lately, but, you know, whatever, he's going to be doing it all out, which feels like a, a last minute changes was being built up. That was a big part of the show. I love Big Bill, you know, we got paired up with him. It was a fun quarter hour of TV. It was just very inconsequential compared to like what's coming up this weekend. And yeah, outside of that, it was just, it felt like, you know, the message board that argument back in the day, Matty, where it was like, you know, oh, you know what wrestling needs? You need to go back to the basics. Yes. You need more squash matches. It yeah. was like that. But like you can't do eight of them on the same show. Sorry, <laughs> like you know, like you still need it. Still needs to feel like it's an important TV show that you're watching. And I, I said that on the night, it felt like a five hundred thousand viewership show, and that's exactly what it was. It felt, and it's. I think the biggest question for me is like how quickly Punk gets 
put over to Dynamite. I think that's coming. I, that's I'll... my... That if we were doing an un- likely unlikely, maybe we'll do one uh, at Trinity at the weekend. My likely unlikely for like the rest of this year will be likely CM Punk winds up on Dynamite again full time. And it won't be, might not even be political. It might not even be enforcing it. It just might be a case of, you know, maybe you can, you know, say he's not that much of a draw because he's on a show with 500,000 people watching it. But you can also say you're wasting a draw in CM Punk on a show that has a ceiling of presumably, you know, five to to 600,000 people at some point, the money's going to talk. I was about to say there, is the, is the brand split over then? Would you say, like, you know, Juice and uh, Jay turning up on Dynamite for this this trios match, Ben? Oh, like, that didn't even like, last <laughs> too long as well. So I'm like, as you say, is the it's always been, like... yeah, kind of they flow from back to foot, back yeah. and forth, and stuff like that. But yeah, it just, just that. I, do you think Punk on Dynamite is that coming, lads? Do you think it's coming at, at some point? Like, okay. I think it's. It's inevitable, I think. I think just gonna have to figure it out. They're doing it, they're doing a taping this week. You know, we're recording this on uh, yeah. on Tuesday before the Dynamite and Collision double taping. They're all gonna have to be on a, in a building together. Then they'll end up making that argument, I think, by uh, by year's end. Look at them TV ratings year on year <laughs> for the um, you know, it is, it, it, it fucking... is <laughs> <laughs> second year in a second year in a row. It's fucking like double digit decline. It's like the the mm. need to do summon. Like at mm. the end of the day. For all your fucking petty bullshit about your backstage arguments, I know he's not allowed in the building, I know I'm not talking to him and I'm not accepting his apology and all that shite, like, just fucking, mm. like, at the end of the day, you strip it back and it comes down to money and it comes down to, like, success of the of the product and there's, like, you know, if they can't get over that to just go, mm. okay, well, Punk's got to be on Dynamite, we've got to have this mix of people, our top stars and things like that, then... No wonder people are fucking falling out with the products and like not watching it and things like that. Because at the end of the day, it's got to be about putting on like good TV with your biggest stars to make as much money as you as you possibly can. And if you can't even fucking settle like petty well, like of- bullshit for that for for that, then yeah. you just you, you can't you're eating yourself alive, aren't you? Can't, like the what's it going to be like in? Another year's time or eighteen months' time and things. Unless you get nipped in the bud now, it's it's necessary. It's just got to be done. It's got to be done. Mm. Just like Like, it just needs a strong head to say, "Fucking sort yourself." Basic management, isn't it? That's it. Mm. There's been worse stuff in history. We talked about Edge, Edge and Matt Hardy. Look at that, and they ended up working together. And there must be thousands of others I could, you know, people could think of. That just screams out to me. This is over a little what? I don't know what it's over. I still don't even like. And it was that long ago. It hasn't been nipped in the bud now. It's the legal issues, though. People don't know about Ben. Or is that like a thing? What's stopping this actually getting resolved? Just what's going on? Like it's fucking nuts. it's rumoured to be part of it, but, you know, yeah, I think it's just... That must be, but think... that must be one of the things it's got to be, because mm. otherwise he'd be, he he should have to step in, Khan, and say, listen, fucking sort it. Let's put the best matches on, the best feuds possible. And that will get more interest. That will, if Punk goes over and they have the big feuds, that'll drum mm. up more interest. It will. It's like um, it's like anti-wrestling this. Like, wrestling's mm. all about, there's some fucking things. Like, smell the money there. The money's fucking there in the, on the table because of this conflict that everybody knows about and stuff. Something that you can lean into massively and just Easy. like, and, and these lads are like, oh no, we don't want the fucking money. Like, let's shy away. We can't, we can't get, you know, we can't get past our, like, differences. Just, well, just it's not even money for them personally, is it? Because the pushback on that as well, they're getting paid whatever they're getting paid. But it's like, well, if you need VPs, you know, surely, and if you and if you see CM Punk who deserves, you know, equal kind of uh, scorning yeah, who allegedly, you know, is trying to run a business here, yeah, you would want the best, you know, for the well, Hasn't he said he'll work with them, though, to be fair to him? Hasn't he already said that first well. before them? I, mean, I know he's being himself <laughs> here, Phil, but at least he's actually said something along them lines. The others have, like, not said nothing, really, have they? But it's in, their, it's in their interest because if, at the end of the day, if the company's double the size in terms of revenue because they've got growth in TV again and they get a better TV deal and all that, next time it comes to negotiate their contracts... To go, ah, oh, company's worth, you know, X hundred million or a billion kind of thing, whereas it was only worth 500 million last time or something like that. Oh, great, you paid us two mil last time. I want four this time because I've been, you know, it, so it comes back to them one way or another eventually. It's not like they're getting paid on the outs or something like that, like the 80s or something. But, like, you know, yeah. this, it's still in their fucking best interests because they're all going to make money down down the line and they make it off merch and everything, like, you know, so it's just... And it'd be amazing, won't it? How good will the telly be when it does happen? It's like, it'll be so fucking it's Better good. than this. <laughs> yeah. That's been the thing with the build to this paper. Everything's so piecemeal. Everything's so, like, is that the thing? that the, the books and Kenny and Hangman, like, I mean, they 
clearly been paid an obscene amount of money to stay and <laughs> Kenny still gets to work with his friends and Tony still wants to make sure that, you know, it's not even just them. Jericho's happy in the corner. He gets his match with Osprey that he wanted. And, you know, the punk can, I suppose, he's gonna have to, he gets to work with his friend and, and Samoa Joe here. And, like, it's just, like, that's the Game of Thrones that's going on backstage, like me and JP were talking about. That every, It's all, it's more about pleasing those different quarters than it is actually, you know, creating the best possible product you could or the best pay-per-view you could here as well. But... I mean, on that point, you know, we can get into the. Uh, I was going to mention, um, yeah, the announced uh, all out stuff um, on uh, on Collision as well, which you know, Mira and Powerhouse Hobbs is going to be an all out. There you go. That's all you uh, you need to know. Um, <laughs> nothing else used where they came out of the show. Um, that was pretty much uh, it. as we continue to build to uh, to Darby Allen uh, versus uh, Luchasaurus, which is the wrong way around compared to the Christian match on uh, on Collision as well, but. If you want to ask the question of like what do what do these EVPs do? Like what is the you know what's the motivation for the EVPs to, to kind of make these kind of uh, business calls? Like we need a uh, a real journalist who gets invited to the conference calls to uh, to join us here and to uh, to chat with us and yeah joining us now on the uh, on Grapple Spotlight. It's one Stephanie Chase um, coming to us uh, not long. Hello, <laughs> after her uh, appearance on the uh, the Tony Khan conference call earlier today. Hello. Yes, right? <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Um, wow, that yeah. was a that was a really strange conference call. I'm glad you got the chance to listen to the full thing eventually, Benno. Yeah, they eventually sent me that link. I got it. Um, so that's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did we learn anything from your answer? You asked, what did you ask Tony? You specifically said uh, one of the, uh, the, EV, the EVPs roles that they've reached yeah. out uh, these conferences. Get into this, I, this conference. I, I asked him what their roles were in a way of trying to get him to compare them to the roles of Punk and Jericho that obviously don't have the title. Um, mm. Did I get an answer, though? I don't know. What do you think of what he said? Because I think it was... Do you have to get an answer? No. Like, <laughs> no, you don't. But I thought this one was like quite... Like someone just sent me a message saying I was laughing so hard at his answer. Like another journalist said that. And it's like, yeah, because... Mm. I don't think we find out anything that the EVPs actually do mm. because the reporting is always what those other guys do. So we're none the wiser on what do well, the he EVPs helped, do. They helped set up all in five years ago. Yeah. And they, you know, <laughs> they helped early on set up another they... show that isn't even an AEW show. Yeah. It was like... And then he slowly started like going into like just – Tony can't waffle and not really answer it. Every report I've read of the answer to your question is just, yeah, I don't think Tony really answered that. Um, I don't think you, that's what's that two in a row now where you've uh, not got an, uh, an answer. We will never know. A little bit. And now they're gonna they're gonna take me off soon. But I'm I'm asking the questions I want to know the answer to though. I I want to know what mm. what Kenny does. I want to know what the Bucks do. At least he didn't say well. One Jackson oversees his wife overseeing the merchandise. That would have been. <laughs> <laughs> no, we said today they're taking loads of t-shirts. That was the one positive we could take, isn't it? That uh, apparently, apparently he's going to take lots of t-shirts. No, not at all. No, <laughs> shows we've been at. Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> what what, what, what constitutes for the merch? What, like big what beam constitu- things. It's almost like ninety-two. What constitutes loads for them? It's like about thirty, oh, no. isn't it? Based on the stuff that you you sort of feedback from the shows that you go like. Mm. They they probably think that is fucking loads that leaving about three million quid on the table there probably but i thought they you know the the call was kind of interesting it's always interesting what tony is like on these different calls and this one he usually does them on a thursday like so after a dynamite um and this one mm. he seemed like a little kind of off his game and i think that was cash wheeler questions that he just could not you know answer slash didn't want and then I think from some of the other stuff he said, it feels like some stuff on the card is changing. So he can't talk about that stuff because he knows it's not happening or like different things are happening. Um, mm. So it's interesting. The funniest thing though was when he was like, oh, I, I've heard people complaining about the, the trios match, but the first all in ended with the trios match. I'm like, yeah, not with Kenny fucking Omega. <laughs> like, yeah. what? As we learned yesterday, 
they, they were still putting together a you know a big indie show. So what do you want to do? You you probably want to get your mate Kenny Omega in. What are you going to do with him? Yeah, put him in a dream match now. <laughs> the dream match, Matty was against Pentagon Junior, yeah. which blew our minds a little bit from 2018. Yeah. But at the time, yeah, yeah. at the time, I'll take yeah. that now. Make that oh, match. Kills <laughs> up Penta. You know, <laughs> Kenny can like in a BT skit kill Alex Alprehentis or something like that. We can get to the match. You know, let's do it. That'd be better, wouldn't it? No. Oh, can you like yeah. imagine Tony Khan just leaving, like reading our tweets about Kenny and just like sitting in his hotel room with like some wine or something, just laughing, being like, oh, people are annoyed. <laughs> Did they not watch all in? I don't know. Maybe he thought it was Kenny in the trios match. He's misremembering the whole thing, and one day it's gonna it's gonna hit him when he watches your uh, podcast reviewing the first one. It'll be like, oh shit, Kenny wasn't in a trios match. <laughs> Oh, we've seen those YouTube clips. He knows I've got a, like a, a folder on my phone, as you well know, of just Tony Khan facial expressions. Um, that's yeah. pretty much uh, <laughs> it takes up an entire part of it. I don't express my phone that. <laughs> or maybe he's just gone back out and listened to the first uh, Grapple Spotlight, maybe. Uh, maybe so, <laughs> so sad, <thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> I was be scared of that day. But yeah, as Steph uh, rightly said, good to have you, uh, have you on for, uh, for, the, for this bit, Steph. And we're uh, going to get your, uh, your thoughts on it uh, and all in in a bit. We're going to be here. Uh, Heading off tomorrow, aren't we, for uh, the trip down to uh, to mm -hmm. London? Um, but yeah, we've got. Um, I suppose the Cash Wheeler thing was the was the other kind of most notable thing. Uh, give you any? Uh, did you expect? But well, I mean, the Cash Wheeler thing on Friday was a hilarious, hilarious news day. Like it was yeah. one of those ones where like Twitter just was ablaze for about two hours. And then, like, such as the world now, within those two hours, we saw him like marched in front of a court and we, we found out, oh, it's actually going to be fine. Like, my, my attitude to it, as Steph knows, has just been, ah, Americans, don't they all just wave guns at each other in traffic? It just sounds normal to me. Like, but like, <laughs> I mean, Gareth Batty had it surprised that all of Tony's kind of like, ah, no, we're taking it seriously, but you know, as far as we know, he's still going to be on the show. If he was ever any danger, he wasn't going to be on. As you say, it was all done within the two hours, wasn't it? Every, like, as you say, after the first thing I thought, could he make this match? Mm -hmm. And then, as you say, within the two or three hours, it had all been pretty much squashed, hadn't it? So then again, mm -hmm. that, by the time that video come out of him, like, did he actually watch the full, um, like, was his verdict or whatever it was? I didn't actually watch the full thing, but it was all, it was all said and done, wasn't it? And it was like, yeah, over. Mm -hmm. All sorted. <laughs> I think, <laughs> um, mm. yeah, carry on. No, God, I was going to say, you've, you've, not, you've, been to, you've been to Florida. You've never seen anyone with a gun, like, you know, pulling it out of the window of a car, just like, you know, standard no. disagreements that happen on freeways, no? That's never happened to me. No, not even in the great state of Florida. Um, I just think, like, I think he was kind of blindsided about it. I think he, like, didn't have that many hours to get ahead of the story as anyone else. And I think, um, I mean... I don't think Tony gets the best legal advice. I'll say no more. Um, so there's that. But I also think that if he had done this at any other time, he would totally be suspended. But I think he's not because it's all in, and he can't he can't remove that FTR Young Bucks match. Like I really think that. I think that. Yeah, he's getting away with it a little bit more because of the the event we have coming up. Definitely. Yeah, to give you any pause, Gareth, uh, on Friday was a funny night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Shouldn't laugh, but it was funny. <laughs> I, was, I was just laughing. It was just one of those where you were just like, you know, when you just type Florida man and then a date into the fucking, like, uh, in, in Google. In the future, somebody just, somebody's just going to get Florida man, type that date, and it's just going to be him, like, uh, stood there, you know, wrestler toting gun out of the car window, just fucking preposterous like but it just to be to be honest i thought like if he's not on the show it's just going to be the ultimate like it's like the cherry on the icing of the cake of the shitness of the booking and the build to this is that like the, mm -hmm. the fucking save all match that they've thrown in at the last minute there of like the books ftr okay we've got we've actually That's got what like, I was a, thinking a, on Friday. A, big, a, a bigger sort of like mega dream match kind of thing then if the rug gets pulled under from that and it ends up having to be like fucking Let's wheel in fucking Davy Boy Smith Jr. as his tag partner or something like that as a memento of the occasion at Wembley or something. Then just it would have just the hilarity of it would have just been far too much. But um, mm. it's just just ridiculous. The internet just... works quick though, doesn't it? Like how many memes were done within them like two hours though? Everyone, it was just like wild, mm. wild. 
a couple of the other notes he had, uh, we talked, he was talking up, uh, you know, that David Zasloff again, um, apparently telling Shag Khan that uh, he told him told that your son's fucking killing it. Um, that's what uh, Khan said uh, on the uh, on the call there. Uh, Kill him off the business. <laughs> He's very proud of him, apparently. That's what we uh, we learned. Dad, you know, his dad, uh, you know, do anything for his, uh, anything for his son. Uh, we had uh, a bit of an up. He was asked about Sting and pretty much just said that uh, you know it's up to Sting whenever he uh, he wants to retire. Um, did have an update on the gate um, for All In, or he didn't give the uh, the paid number, but he did say um, we're looking at eighty thousand in um, as far as uh, as far as there. And he said the gate sits at ten million um, altogether. So yeah, that's uh, absolutely uh, you know as we've been doing you know as much as we've been negative on the bill the last while, we've always been like. That number has become normal, hasn't it? We've got to accept how astronomical, you know, the numbers that we're talking yeah. here as far as like, you know, Amazing. not as good as do to be in the ninety thousand, Matty, but you know, it's uh, <laughs> of course it's not. Of course it? not. Uh, this, oh, it's uh, no, it's, honestly, it's, even it's amazing what he's done as like getting in there and getting this uh, booked and stuff like that months ago. Amazing strategy, and it's paid off for him. So fair play. Wait a minute! I thought Jeff was in charge of international bookings. Oh, should we get the credit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I asked I asked Jeff about Wembley once and he had to be like, Oh, that was that was booked before I turned up and started doing things. Like when I interviewed Jeff once, I was thinking of things <laughs> to, to ask related to that wall. Oh. But yeah. <laughs> so we can't even credit Jeff. I'm surprised he didn't take credit for it. I'm amazed. I know. <laughs> he was, he was on it. You know? <laughs> he's working some kind of humble angle now. That's what he's doing. He's trying to. Oh uh, yeah. That's his way to uh, to get ahead. Uh, he'll take if him and Grado end up on the show in any form, he'll be the one who takes responsibility for that. I was going to say he's not even on is he? He's not even mm. on the card so far, is he, Jeff? Allegedly. No. Yeah, well, he, he, will him. Tony, he will. Well, Tony said like during this, like you know, as well as kind of giving giving those updates. He, and as well on the tickets as well, he was uh, pushed by uh, by Brandon Thurston on uh, whether he was going to uh, be auditable when it comes to the uh, the numbers, whether he was going to give her a uh, you know a WWE style uh, entertainment, you know, counting the uh, the ushers and the other people in the building. He did say he was going to be honest. That was um, so we'll great. Find, that we'll was find so the official great. Number on the <laughs> Brandon was quick on his feet when he left. Oh yeah, Brandon just basically saying like, "Are you going to be honest?" <laughs> that was very <laughs> good. Love that. Yeah, apparently is honest wrestling promoter. You know, it's possible to uh, oh, to find yeah. one. Um, but he did. Yeah, he talked about possible changes to the show, and that you know we're going to be going through the full show in a minute. Um, he had a lot to say, didn't he? I was listening to him then waffling about how you know things have changed, and he was talking about how he wants to do something with Danielson, and then he was bringing up Jamie Hater, and you know a couple of other injuries. Pack being another one. Um, he will blame it all you... on injuries if he can. He will always blame it all on injuries, and not only that, he will start by saying. Well, remember in 2022, when in a matter of weeks, I had like Punk go mm. down, Danielson, Omega and Jericho all in one. Like he will go back right to that very time that he mentions at every press conference and then go mm. into to this mm. week's or this month's ones. Always, every time. It's the canon that exists uh, in his head. Um, yeah. But he did say that, yeah. He kind of he alluded to, like, changes that have been made last minute, which, again, I'm sure we'll get into whether uh, any of those changes are uh, for forgivable as uh, as far as the uh, the end product goes. But he said there might be changes coming. So, like, anyone who's listened to this on Thursday morning after uh, Dynamite might know a little yeah. bit more than us, but going into to, to this week's Dynamite, it sounds like from what Fightful are reporting as well, as well with Phoenix he's talking about, there's some kind of visa issue with him um, is apparently the story that's uh, going to cause uh, that match to uh, to get changed. Do we expect any other changes, Steph? Is that kind of all he's uh, all he's really said? Yeah, I think it's. I think that's the only one that's out there. But I'm guessing from what he said, what Tony said, there must be more. Um, mm. But maybe more people in that multi man. Like I can't really think of what could be changed. Garrett's you know? favorite. Uh, the the uh, the Hardy Boys maybe getting uh, getting in the uh, the Aussie Open spot, you know. Oh, they the cannot game. let Jeff Hardy in the country. <laughs> <laughs> they're letting they're letting cash like, in, so you know. <laughs> I know, but like not Jeff Hardy. <laughs> they cannot <laughs> let Jeff Hardy in the country. I don't I understand the Phoenix. We've 
we've all seen Phoenix on Indies in the UK. What's he done since? Like he's been robbing banks or something? Or oh. I mean, I'm guessing maybe he wasn't. You know, if he was wearing fight, working Fight Club Pro and that, he probably wasn't on the same kind of visa. But it's wild that, mm. that something like that can go a wrong this this late. And yeah, it was alluded to there might be others as well. Uh, yeah. so this might not be the all-in card, um, Gareth. It might all turn out. It might all be fine. You know, it might be massive uh, changes on the way on Wednesday. He's going to reshuffle everything. That was the only. That was the positive of the FTR books thing. Honestly, you started to see people fancy booking it, going, "Okay, well, if that's the case, well, we pull Kenny out of the six man and we put him in a singles, and then we do this and we do." It might have actually been for the best. Just a little bit more changes. Well, like I could just see on Dynamite this week, there'd been some kind of like forty-man battle royal, and the last eight participants who are left then just like get put into a tournament to see the yeah, final two, two are to like go into the match or something like that. Wouldn't surprise me if we got some last-minute mechanism to make some uh, make some change there. But um, mm. I don't know. It's just it's it's just it remains just a. It, it blows my mind that we can be this late in the day and like all shit like this isn't just known and sorted out and things like that. Even yeah. like not even just the booking point of view, just like red tape stuff then and things like that. Or knowing that there's like certain people, like certain situations and things that mean that certain people are, are going to have to be like the you know not available or matches flipped around and things like that. I, again, it just like just it's mm. just like pouring more and more fuel on the on the fire to. You know how, how how badly thought out some of this uh, this stuff's been, and um, I don't want to sound like such like a negative fucker, <laughs> it, but it's just the way it's just the way I've been made to feel over the last six weeks, and like you know that's mm. it's, it's I can't get my head around that. It's just it's it's mental to me that I that I feel like this going into it. Yeah, surely if that if the rumor that he's been that. Will just said that he's been trying to establish U.S. residency and can't leave the country. Wouldn't that be known ages mm. ago? Or the announced like, match? What are you doing? Yeah. yeah, like what? Uh, you see, bad legal advice. I'm telling you. But mm. I just, um, I don't know if they make any more changes. I just think it's gonna look, yeah, it's it's gonna look bad. It's gonna look. Should we launch into? Should we talk Sorry? our level where we are? Should we talk our excitement level yeah. going to all in? Should we talk the uh, the cards? Let's do it. Um, Gareth, Gareth can't wait. Gareth's uh, <laughs> been chomping at the bit. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's weird because I think me me and JP have definitely got the uh, the reps as the uh, as the people who are you know negative on this stuff and. You know, I've definitely been uh, kind of uh, banging the drum of uh, things not being good enough. I just can't believe we are now here, that it is, in fact, the week of All In. <laughs> and this is it. I mean, And again, we're saying this, we're recording this before Dynamite and Rampage this week. Um, you know, there's a fun Kenny in the books uh, against the juice and, off, and the guns on Dynamite. Moxley and allegedly Phoenix is happening, which I'm guessing will be the uh, the angle there. Uh, Aussie Open are facing Matt and Jeff Hardy for the ROH tag titles, so potentially that could happen. Oh my god. Could, uh, yeah. the fear that. They're also fear. You know what? Like, I fear that now because I've been thinking for a while that like, no offence to Aussie Open, but it's not as if mm. they're like a big AEW team to like even get in this card when the Lucha Bows were previously Ring of Honor champions. Now I'm just scared heard about the hardies oh, that could be the uh the outcome of dynamite this week the other thing they're doing as well for some reason swerve and ar fox are taking on darby allen and uh and nick wayne so remember that uh, that big angle that you love gareth uh we did the whole uh should be the pay-per-view match wayne. He's back getting his revenge on dynamite <laughs> the week before the pay-per-view <laughs> okay <Take laughs> is that is that how you book things gareth you know when you talked about this fantasy wrestling promotion that you had in the air uh, and the sky at the time of the uh, the original All In. This is how you saw things going. You know, Jericho Osprey uh, contract signing on it uh, on Dynamite, and then off to the races, mate. Biggest pay per view of all time this weekend, and we're uh, we're ready, we're prepared, and we're uh, we're good to go. I've just come, I've, I've just come to realise that I'm just absolutely just fucking deluded, kind of over, like, and uh, I just put too much faith in this. Like when I was, I don't know if it was last time I was on Spotlight, but the Spotlight before, I still thought. It's going to be Kenny and CM Punk. Of course it is. It's the biggest th thing that they've got that they could possibly do. Kind of thing. Of course they're going to like engineer this huge moment in front of like 80,000 people to be some like, the, at least the start of some like, you know, mega 
storyline that's going to carry them through the next 12 months or something based on oh well we we know what's going on in the background i still convince myself in the same way as that like i convinced myself that those seeds of that cody Rhodes heel turn were uh, still uh, still gonna happen like we talked about Sorry, last night last night as well but like <laughs> because, because this is why this is this is why my engagement with it is just so on the floor because not there's nothing pays off like at all like it's just shit just happens and there's there's you know like obviously you know got matty on and like you talk about you know everybody who listens to this ever knows what i think about wwe and like my my thoughts on that but at, at the very least when you're going into something like say that SummerSlam card that, that was on the other week and they can put the little video vignettes together before each of the matches and then you go all right here you go here's something that's been built over weeks or months on tv and there's little like you know, plot points along the way that can create a little one minute, one minute, 30 video that gives you the backstory and gives you a reason to, you know, invest in this match that we're about to watch. Like, I'm like looking down this list in front of me and I'm thinking, why should I care about like 70% of this card? There's, there's, it's just, here's some guys who wrestle and they're going to have a wrestling match against each other. Sometimes it's a six man, sometimes it might be one on one, sometimes it might be a four way. And they're just in there because, and as well as say, there's some fucking great wrestlers there. So we know in ring. They're going to go out there, they're going to give them 20 minutes and they're going to have a fucking match that's as fun as hell and they're going to like work hard and save the day in like some instances. But that's not the point, is it? It's like, it should, it, it's, it'll be good, but it could and should have been like fucking mega, especially when you've got this backdrop of 80,000 people and just the, the setting. This should be stuff that's like, you know, in the same way that for 20 years later, WWE are able to put out like, vignettes that have like show Hogan and Andre with the silver dome in the background and things like that. All these is there should be these groundbreaking things, but it just feels like it's just gonna be ah oh, no, nah, there was just that match and like yeah there was loads of people there and it was brilliant. But like on to the next one kind of thing. Next row in my spreadsheets is oh yeah, because I'd quite like to see him face him or you know, oh fuck I've booked knocking things for that. Better have a battle royal or a tournament or randomly this guy can just do a it attack him from the side while he's getting interviewed backstage. And oh, there's there you go. There's our main event for the next pay per view or something. You're just like, come yeah. on, right? Is it like I've just lost uh, my my faith in him as a booker is absolutely on the floor. Like it, I, I, I've just got zero zero faith in his ability to to book anything compelling or interesting. And unfortunately, I'm going into the biggest wrestling show. <laughs> After 35 years as a fan, for, for more than that as a fuck, more than that as a fan, kind of <laughs> like kind of kind of the biggest show I'll ever go to, and I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to go and see my mates for a few pints, like the day before and the night before, and yeah. like, and 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 that's what I'm excited about, like not some awesome main event or some blood feud that's been paid off in the biggest setting of all time, like what. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. like two peas in a pod you and Steph by the way because I think you're feeling very much the same way aren't you Steph um, it's not yeah. a... <laughs> I mean it's just like it's, this is not how I envisioned this to be you know when AEW did their biggest show ever well I never thought it'd be at Wembley Stadium but once they told us it was there like I didn't envision to kind of feel this way before it feel like it's just another show like this card is no better than any card i've been to in america like it, it's not and it should have been and for a company a booker that holds off on so many big matches all the time if there was ever a time to do it and to see if something for it was it was this show and whatever he's like holding out for is just it's never going to come it's it's going to be another cody situation where like when cody left we never got anything that we should have with him but it's just it's wild and even you know what you were saying about wrestlemanias that have been iconic and stuff even like the kind of worst wrestlemanias like they usually have really at least one match where it's like two guys facing off that everyone's amped for and usually it's the world title match and i mean we'll get into that but i don't think that your big main event match should be two guys facing each other who for the past couple of weeks have been friends, you know, like playing dodgeball and 
working out t together you know like if you think of the the backdrop that they're going to have at Wembley and and you think of like Hogan Andre or big matches any of the Undertaker's big matches and you think of like the crowds behind them there was a lot more of a, a storyline for a fight in front of a lot of people happening than MJF Cole you know being buddies and maybe one of them will turn on the other. I mean, it, that's that's just not the that's not the kind of main event for something at this level. Like it's it's really not. We've learned the wrong lesson from SummerSlam '92. It's just like, oh, the mates. So you know, we'll do that again. We'll do it. We'll do something. Yeah. I guess probably what it's in Tony's head cannon. That's in there somewhere, yeah. along with the other head cannon that he's not telling us about on his actual. <laughs> <show>. Like. <laughs> I know, I'm like... still sitting here thinking, who's Kota Ibushi? <laughs> <laughs> like, as Simon says here, and, and, you know, if only we were all, like, big Tumblr people, because we'd be loving this. There's all those little things you want, Gareth. They're all there in the story, apparently, because it's the way Hangman Page drinks his beer. Apparently, that's a big thing. Um, whatever. <laughs> but, like, the, Simon says here, at least the Yanks love the card, because that's the thing people keep turning around to us and saying. You're going to have a good day. You're going to have a good day, aren't you? It's going to be a good little oh. wrestling card, is it not? And it's, like, I think, as we've been saying on this podcast for a while, I think that fundamentally, like all of these little things, you know, the idea of like, what was it, six weeks ago, we were like, how do we not know the card? And then three weeks ago, we were like, okay, how do we not know the directions? And then two weeks ago, we were like, where's the fucking story? And all those yeah. individual complaints were reasonable complaints, don't you know, and I think well-founded when it wasn't just us making them, but other people making them as well. But it was the overall that's the issue here. It was the fact that all of those little things were clues, and it felt like the closer we got to the show, the closer we were realizing, oh, this isn't going to be the biggest show ever. They don't think of it that way. They're thinking of it as the nice little card before All Out. Mm -hmm. They're thinking of it as the... You know, I've, I've literally had somebody say this on Twitter this week. Oh, it's a, it's like it's, it's, it's not like a WrestleMania. It's more akin to a Saudi show, and it's like, well, one, I mean, you know, somebody needs to sit you down and make you read the history book and understand what Wembley is and understand yeah. that America's not the only place with stadiums and that we've got a lot of fucking stadiums and Wembley is bigger than the rest of them because of the history and the prestige that comes with actually being there. But I think in that comment lied what I think probably is the take here, like even internally in AEW, it's like, it's a good tagline, the biggest wrestling show ever. But because of all those points you both raised, they've never treated it like one and that's been... The most insulting thing that's been what we've been getting wound up on week on week to the point where as me and jp said last week which is the point of acceptance now we just started laughing about it and just kind of going can't even be angry anymore it is what it is you know and, and you know what the, 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 sorry go on Steph. oh well just quickly I, I don't think the americans can comprehend what wembley is because they've never been fucking showing on tv what it is even properly to make people yeah, think that wembley? this is a great venue like I even think to you know wwe would have done an amazing package like better than they've done for you know the kingdom of saudi arabia to show us what that is like think, think of like the package wwe would be trotting out every week coming up to wembley to show us what wembley is aw hasn't done that tony khan doesn't have like he hasn't shown I mean, obviously he's excited about it, but as far as what he's put on TV, it's not 1% of what Ryan Reynolds gives you in Welcome to Wrexham when Wrexham are playing Wembley. You know, like, he's he's <laughs> there. God, like, I could miss this match. This My team's playing at Wembley, and you're like... Great little Ben Foster any story of, this week as well. Loads of stuff going on in Wrexham. I know what they're doing. If only of, like, any of the wrestlers made it like that like you you haven't even had a wrestler say to the other like i have to challenge you at wembley like th this is where it has to be no one's even said that like even if i like i don't know i think that could have been used to for many of these like ftr and the bucks and even you know like fucking osprey could have at least said during like that terrible segment on dynamite like tell us why if he wants this match with Jericho, like why in Wembley? Like someone give us a little like sell for this. Yeah, that's the thing. And that, that, that word Wembley, got it. it doesn't mean anything on AWC because they've never made it feel anything. That's the reason people don't understand why this is important because AW have never, it's, into, it's another one. It's in Tony Khan's head, Cannon. He knows exactly why Wembley is important. He does know that, but the rest of his company and 
you know, him and his book and aren't treating it like that. And that's a big part of the problem. Yeah, and I think it's one of those where you look at the money that he spends in other areas as well to get older, like music and things like that. That's something where I'm sure he could have been like buying bits of footage and things like that and showing like what a massive event at Wembley looks like, you know, like concert footage or something like that, where there's been a packed out Wembley or like boxing or something like that and showing like the fucking vastness of it and the volume of people in there and it's dark and everyone's like, you know, got the lights going and stuff. To a, the average AEW fan who watches their product like week in, week out, and has watched their pay per views, it's immediately going to look four hundred times more impressive than any AEW show that they've ever seen before. It's going to look more impressive than seventy five percent of WWE shows or something like that that they've ever you, you know seen presented as well. So again, it just mm. th- there's just little small just details like that that they could they could throw into into the mix, but it just to me, just smacks again of just like your classic short termism that comes with Tony mm-hmm. Khan and comes with AEW in that like, it's like, yeah, we've sold 80,000 tickets and is a bucket load of shit fucking eat that kind of thing like that we're, that we're mm-hmm. putting in front of you now that you've bought your ticket already. But they're not thinking about next time. If this was boss, mm-hmm. if this was brilliant and it was built really well and the card was fantastic, you'd be like, oh, I can't wait for the next one. Like this, I know I'm going to have a good day. I know I'm going to go and I'm going to enjoy it. And it's, you know, it's a wrestling show, big stars. I'm going to be made up to seeing some of these people for the first time or just seeing them in this setting people I've seen before. But I'll tell you what, if they announce one next year, I won't be buying a bloody ticket until they've started to announce announce matches matches and things like that. Mm, And and I bet any money that there's, you know, 20,000 of the that crowd are going for the novelty just because it's wrestling at Wembley kind of oh, thing. Yeah. There's going to be a big chunk of people who are in that first wave of ticket sales who, what, yeah, was it 25,000 they did in the first week or something like that? We, we we all just bought tickets like immediately. Yes, AW Wembley, this is going to be amazing. I'd love to know what proportion of that 25,000 will be in the same boat as well when they go, oh, hang about, I've just dropped like best part of 600 quid or 700 quid there to go to london for the the weekend to buy a ticket for this show hotels travel the booze and whatever food and all that that comes around with it next time you kind of be going do you know what i want to make sure that i'm actually getting my money's worth here or i maybe just spend 20 quid and sit at home and watch it on fight because i've been to wembley now and i've seen it in that setting and you know surely the idea is you do it and it's so good that you grow next time and you've got you've got ninety thousand there next time but I'd, I'd be bloody amazed if they do. This this very much sort of like smacks of, you know, people talk about the um, like the delayed effect of things like TV rating and ticket sales and stuff like that. This feels like the sales ahead of well, like where the perception of the company is and th- um, things. You know, it's it's almost like you look at those TV ratings and there's the downturn that they're on. This is this mm-hmm. doesn't you know the television product over the next twelve months. There's no reason that they've given us in the last 18 months to suggest that that's going to improve to the level that makes you think like, God, this is going to be booked amazingly and next time it's going to be outstanding and everybody's got to be there and it's going to be this, you know, mega, mega, you know, all in three kind of thing. Right. That, that, that to, to me, they've taken that's away nice. my confidence in the product for, for next time now, definitely. Mm. I think... <laughs> I was just going to say, like, sorry. (laughs) I feel once it is over, it is going to expose more of those problems. Like what what Gareth was talking about, like the ratings are down. I heard you talk earlier about like Collision 2. The ticket sales are down for their domestic shows, like for All Out as well. And I think once they don't have Wembley to like hang their hat on. And to me, just with the way they've, they've gone about everything like building building the card um even just the promotion of it i heard you guys talk about that's been nothing to write home about um and i think we'll see on the day because i do wonder if they're going to be able to produce like something that lives up to the spectacle of wembley if you know what i mean as far as like production you know lighting pyro all that sort of like those wrestlemania frills that you would get if it was WWE and it has made me start to wonder if yes they sold 80,000 tickets for it but as a company were they actually ready to do this show like the demand was there but were they actually ready you know when it comes to booking 
promotion, like all the behind the scenes stuff, you know, it does make mm. me get the merch over. Wonder. Yeah, because mm. it's far enough selling the tickets, but can you can you actually produce the show? And I wonder, uh, especially with the fact they're doing a, a stadium stampede match, because we all know what the camera works like watching at home and <laughs> I'm really yeah, not on. sure on that one. Good luck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, Matt, this, isn't it? This, this, I was just going to say, this must be music to Matt's ears. This, listen to all these AEW fans slacking no, the product you know, off. Yeah. Half an hour. I'm, 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 thing I'm is, Matt, it, not even you, like just about, you know, it's, it's fascinating to hear. Yeah. It is. It really We're going to have a good. That, this is the thing. So the, the, again, that we've had them in the comments of the previous YouTube videos. You're going to have a good time in the day, yes, because because yes. you guys both make great points about this is going to mask AEW's problems. The problems of the show are going to be masked because on because by hook or by crook. On Sunday, the show's going to happen. The good wrestlers are going to get in there and have good wrestling matches, as we keep saying. Yeah, the fans are going to be great because, of course, they are. Amazing, There's 80,000 yeah. plus British and traveling fans who are going to be in one place who are going to make this a special atmosphere. And it's going to be, despite himself, for Tony Khan's sake, it's going to be one of the greatest days in wrestling history, despite itself. And it's going to appear that way. And it's going to, we're all like, people are going to. I'm getting it out there now. I just want to get it out, Matt, before it happens on the, on the preview show. Like, yes, the show is going to be good. No, yeah. on Monday morning, when yeah. you come to me and you're like, told you it was going to be good, you haven't proved anything because the show could be good on it. How many fight club pro that. shows did we go yeah. to that were good on the night that were booked 10 minutes before it happens? You know what I mean? It's like, it's not <laughs> the prestige and the, and the, the stakes and the storytelling that could have been done to make this something extra special that suits. What you of all people, Matty, have spent a couple hundred quid on being yeah. there for isn't there, is it? We're going to have a nice no. little day out. We're all yeah. going to see each other, have a boss time, but it's not going to be the antidote to the problem Steph and Gareth have said. No, but that's right. Like, even when it, I'll say, got announced and it, the actual Wembley Stadium got, I, even I was like, you know, wow. They're, gonna, they're actually doing Wembley Stadium. I thought they're going to get their heads together. They're going to put on the biggest show. It's basically what you were saying. You know, that's all I can literally say. Like, I was expecting the biggest matches, the best possible storylines for me to go, fucking hell, I'm actually scared that these could do this a lot or like sell over here more times and stuff like that. But no, I, I, and I'm, I am a casual compared to like, you know, especially you, Steph, and, and you, Benno, like, but with AEW. But Sorry, it's like, I'm, Yeah, no. no <laughs> I, 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 I used to be. <laughs> yeah, he's so he's come with modern wrestling, didn't like, basically. But it's like, I'm actually just taking this off. Apart from what we've all said about seeing each other, having a great time. Mm -hmm. I'm taking it off with the stuff like I've never been to Wembley. I'm taking that mm -hmm. off just to visit the stadium. Oh, I've okay. never seen I've never seen Kenny Omega live. Or granted, it's not in like a great match, but I'm just taking that box. I haven't seen MJF live. I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of MJF, which we'll talk the card in a minute. Can't wait to see him and see what they do with that storyline. So there's little nuggets of like just little personal tick offs that I'm going for with this because like as you use, it's certainly not for this card. It's not like. Absolutely not. And as yeah, Will's been saying in the chat, you know, you compare it to other big AW shows, you know, doesn't really uh doesn't hold up um to the numbers and stuff. Although Tony Khan did say Steph on the on the media call today that you know we got a a, a trios match in the main event of the original all in. So <laughs> why is everyone complaining? <laughs> like, how shit's that though? How how <laughs> crap is that? It's so bad. It does, like there is, sometimes I'm like on these calls or even in the in-person scrum, and I just want to talk back. Back. Like I, just, I wish it was like a real conversation <laughs> where you could talk back because you know, like if if one of you tried to justify it by saying that, I'd be like, hang the fuck on, mate. Like Kenny Omega wasn't in a trios match, but unfortunately, when it's Tony Khan, you can't say that back to him, can you? Yeah. <laughs> no, they should just do it at WrestleMania every year. WrestleMania one was a tag match, wasn't it? In the main event. Oh yeah, we just true. Just have a throwaway tag. Just have a throwaway tag match at WrestleMania every year for the main event. But it's like, even no. like Will saying there, like they've got an international title. Why isn't that a big match at this show? Like, in a, in that's a wild. It's not the international it. title one is wild. It's little stuff and like that. It's meant like an Orange Cassidy, you know, doing these defenses every week and then like Tony just ran out of ideas so we just like stopped that whole story when you were coming up to like the biggest show ever that happens to be in England you know international it's like they had to have them defend it in Canada but not England 
and it's international, you know, Bizarre. when like Pac has brought that title to Rev Pro before, but yet Orange Cassidy's not defending it at Wembley. Like that's that's wild. And I mean that that does show poor planning because you know, something like if well, I don't want to say if I was booking, but if I was booking like <laughs> Orange Cassidy's opponent for Wembley would have been set, you know, sometime a long time ago, and that that's would be easy, what we're building it? towards. That's probably easy something to do. That's, that's, that's like an easy win. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. You, you probably and wouldn't have done an anarchy in the arena in May, would you? You know what I mean? Like no. you would have been like, you know what? We've got a bigger stadium coming up, so maybe let's just hold back. That's the one for me, Ben, because he said that. Press comments didn't need that. That's going to be the uh, signature match for double or nothing. So he's yeah. doing another one it's so quick. That's like just shows you. That's, that's just so wild. I think when the stadium, honestly, the stadium stampede announcement just annoyed me because I knew when I went on Twitter, people would be like, I'm so excited for stadium stampede. And okay, like stadium stampede is super cool and i will would be excited watching it but to me like just adding that to the card did feel like a hail mary like let's give them something that sounds cool that people will be excited about like calling it stadium stampede i was just like like really like you're pulling this trick out of the bag in wembley hmm you know yeah, that's right. uh, and, what, and what that does, though, as well, is it means that it, when I'm like looking at the people, it means that I get to see Eddie Kingston, I get to see Orange Cassidy, I get to see Mox, I get to see Wheeler you or I love, but I don't really do it because I'm not going to no. be able to fucking see them, so I don't get to see them. <laughs> no, no. we're getting 10 singles matches, Gareth. I don't think you understand how this works. Like, it's 10 different, you know, he cuts it up. <laughs> is that not? Benno, this won't be like Vegas when we were following them around the arena. This won't oh, be like Vegas. Amazing. <laughs> oh, I love Anarchy in the Arena, but that's it. That's yes. Anarchy in the Arena Stadium yeah. Stampede, supposedly a different thing. Um, yeah, I just think it, uh, imagine if they put a pre taped video up. Just imagine. I was thinking that, Steph, if they start it like in, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I don't, you know, it would be, be oh just the icing on the cake for me. That. <laughs> like the last, when I was at a Dynamite in, I, I think it was Sacramento, they showed us pre tape of, of Hobbs and, um, Wardlow and that was a very small crowd booing what's 80,000 people booing a video screen gonna sound like you know it'll be like the boiler room brawl won't it taking them yeah. the day and then you just spill out all 10 of them or 12 of them maybe, yeah. maybe phoenix can do the match you can do it on close circuit you know what i mean from he like gets stuck out in the feet and then he doesn't come out in the stadium yeah good workout well, on that note, we should get into the, the card itself, and we'll uh, we'll we'll do that along the way. It's a daunting task this to go through this uh, this this show of shows and this uh, this card of cards. But we're gonna do our best because again, we all are excited to be there on on Sunday and have a have a fun day out, <laughs> which will be cut short by uh, the fact that we gotta go get over to Wembley for the uh, the three thirty doors. Um, that'll be fun. Just the just the organisation of it. Are they going to get everyone in before five? Are they going to get everyone yeah, out before that's eleven? That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Beto, there, we? I'm going to be so pissed if I miss the after party. But like, how long is that scrum going to go? Because oh, I think there's going to be a lot of like I don't want to call them rando, but rando you know, journalists that aren't wrestling journalists. And I know how long yeah. there are when I can literally name everyone in the room. But I think it's mm -hmm. going to be a packed room and it's going to go on all night and you're all going to be at the after party and I won't. I'll be so annoyed because <laughs> I want to come. <laughs> I no want to go to the no after snacks. party. No, there'll be no snacks or nothing. I just... Uh, we'll, I we'll, be st we'll be stuck on Wembley Way. Don't don't worry about that. If it's anything like after the, like the Rugby League or the NFL and things like that, you just have to stand on Wembley Way for about a fucking Keep it open late for me, please. There, you'll, be, you'll, you'll be all right. You'll, you'll Make probably sure get I get in. <laughs> Uh, I want we'll, into we'll the after party. The by, <laughs> by the time. Okay, there. I'll join you there then. Oh, well, on that note, yeah, we'll be leaving all in it as we uh, we head to Wembley for the opener on the zero hour. <laughs> Great place to start. Sorry. Folks. Aussie Open versus MJF and Adam Cole. The boyhood dream comes true. Hey, we we said this, Matty. This is a uh, what what it's a synergy. This MJF opens uh, the first all in. Yes, yeah. Tony said in the conference call, he's opening the zero hour and main event in the uh, the I show. I feel said... like MJF and Cole, which we'll talk about more when we get to the yeah. main event, 
is up your street, though. Like, in no, a lot of ways. Like... As I've said, this is probably because it probably is the only one that's been built up on telly that, like, you can follow mm. for, like, been a what, six weeks, maybe, that you follow this story. And granted, mm. it's not you talking about good and bad stories. You know, as Steph said earlier, it's not the way you should be building up to, like, a big world title match at Wembley in front of these people. Mm. But I, to be fair to this one, I just hope they do the, for me, how I'd do it, they should do the turn in this match. Then they heat it up for the main event. And that's what I'd do personally. And like, yeah, this is one, as I say, been followed on TV. So it's, it is an authentic AEW, you know, match, at least for me anyway. Mm. And I'm looking forward, looking forward to see what they do in this match leading into the main event. What's the thinking here, Gareth? What, 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 why, why is this on the zero? <laughs> like, it's what to is get there? everyone in, sorry, Gareth. It's to get everyone in the stadium, is it? The... To make sure it oh, is. To get... Oh, I get you, yeah. To get yeah. everyone in for five o'clock, so like they're not filing in and missing it. They want that, like. I think it's to... so they get to do a double clothesline in front of 80,000 people, <laughs> and then we can do the turn. I, I, I don't know. What do you think of my conspiracy theory, Gareth? Like, literally, they're going to do a turn on the pre show and heat this thing up. Ready for the main event, and all of our complaints will be washed away. Then we'll have a heated main event. No, well, that's it. I mean, you know, he's, he's had no telly to like build it to that point, so he had to just, <laughs> you know, he, he's, he's really struggled with the number of hours that he's had to try and piece something together. So you know, it only makes sense that he'd throw it in and do it on the pre show when you know half the people probably won't even see it in the stadium, and um, you know, some of the TV audience probably won't sit, won't see it either. I, I, I honestly had no idea that this was even happening until about three days ago, and then, like, <laughs> I, saw, I saw it, I saw it, and I was just like, Come on. I, 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 I could not, I literally could not believe it. I was, I was, what, like, can, can you imagine, like. Can you imagine if they're just uh sorry, I keep drawing all these fucking old parallels, but I just keep thinking like imagine if WrestleMania five they just fucking threw like the mega powers were forced to have a match just before uh, at, at the start of on the on the pre-show of WrestleMania five, just to like heat things up a bit further for the main event a bit like later on in the, you know, just just throw them out there against the fucking Bolsheviks or something like that. Like, I was going to say, it would even just... be against like the Twin Towers or something with the Gareth or, or nah. that big team like that. This is insane to me. Like, I, mm. when I see MJF for the first time, I want to see him in the main event at the fucking stadium for the first time, not on the pre show. And like, mm. I love Aussie Open as much as, you know, probably the, the next. If they're in the match. British, again. Well, it could British, be the Hardys. If, the if, if this is the fucking artist, like, gee, like, un like unbelievable, but like, it's good, it's cool, like, it's it's cool for Aussie Open to get mm, get yeah. that spot if Absolutely. they do, if 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 they yeah. do, but like, you know, beyond that, it just mm. it it just defies logic to me why you would why and you would do this. Reason, as you said, why as the, se yet, the uh, second. The second well, pop, you know, the second pop's never as big as the first pop ever. Like when there's a, you know, when you see the same. That's why someone's show turning, twice. Gareth. I think someone's mm. definitely got to be turning in this. Got to mm. be for me. I think it's the only way, the only reason it's happening. I think it's, it's got to be better. Yeah. The, have your cake and eat it, like, and they're gonna find a way. Whether it, I, don't, it's, I think my question, Steph, is whether it's a full turn or whether they just do. You know, there's a bit of pushing and shoving to just give it a bit of, you know, just a little bit of heat to your baby face versus baby face main event. Uh, I know you've been hating this story uh, as well. Um, could they save it if they do something like that, though? If it's like they try and juice it up a bit, like, you know, I don't know, uh, Roderick Strong yeah. turns, the kingdom have been, your favourites, Mass, the kingdom have been uh, yeah. knocking rounds, you know? I've seen but, them, uh, yeah. Good package, good seen them, well package yeah. yeah. There's definitely stuff they could have done to juice it up, but not on the pre-show like uh, i i really agree with like everything gareth said and i think it's nuts putting this on absolutely nuts um love aussie open great guys you know spend some time with them great guys so there's nothing against them and it better be them and not the fucking hardies but <laughs> I always feel like you know when you watch wrestlemania and there's the pre-show and the arena is like not full and you're just half watching it and getting your snacks together and even though you can see the stadium it doesn't actually spoil it for you when wrestlemania starts and like every all the pyro goes off and then you feel like you're actually seeing wrestlemania with the first match so to me putting your world champion on the pre-show is just such a daft idea like no matter what when it when the, these two come out at the end of the night it will be a second time around pop and there's been times like like i always think of that that um 
Rampage I went to before Full Gear where everyone was so disappointed the punk didn't come out and I was like but they're saving punk's pop for tomorrow night because you know we all haven't seen punk in person in a long time the people at Full Gear um but now they're doing this with MJF and Cole it's just like it, it's just it's just silly and yeah they want to do the double clothesline in front of all the people I guess Adam Cole's gonna be the one that turns because it's always MJF but then I mean Adam Cole just came back as a baby face he put us through that deeply traumatic because it was so awful storyline with Chris Jericho (laughs) for no reason then if he's just going to be a bad guy now like that doesn't make sense to me either but I get like this is a this is a novel idea right and it's cool to take risks I'm not sure it's a risk to be taken at Wembley all in I just wouldn't have done that and I, I get MJF he opening match to the first all in right that's awesome it's big enough that he's main event in the second one you don't have to put him out first again on the second one you know it's I, it. it's baffling to me but yeah i'm sure it'd be great yeah the crowd will be loud for the double close line you know and that's, that's <laughs> all that matters is it? like i said i'm i'm mostly with using the negativity i think and I think you hit on it there. I think I will be more positive on it. And, you know, the fact that it is quite a unique way to book. Like, I almost have I've said to JP a couple of times, I almost admire trying a different route to a big match. But the, you can get away with that if you've got other big matches, you know? If there was Kenny versus Punk on the show as well, and, you know, another, you know, another Moxley and Hangman had the blood feud going on, or whatever combo you want, then cool, because this is the different match, there's a very different way to get to it, but when it's your rich, literally, really, your only big singles match you're building to, I don't know, but we'll, we'll get to the main event as we, uh, we get uh, later into the uh, into the night, because I say that we don't have uh, big matches, but I'm just going by the cage match order here, so don't blame me, but what cage match has uh, up first, or up next to you, um, is one of the big singles matches of the night, is it not? Um, as we all get the dream match that uh, existed in at least two people's brains who were going to be among the 80,000 people <laughs> at Wembley. Chris Jericho versus Will Ospreay, as uh, Dave Belter did say this week on uh, on Twitter, that no, 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 you don't understand. You know, we're, apart, I, mean, I think this is one where me and JP will take a bit true lap. Like, we kind of we kind of stumbled upon it. We're like, you know what? There's actually no... Everyone making the excuse. Osprey Omega can't happen on this show. So it's happening at Wrestle Kingdom. Is it fuck? Because <laughs> Osprey's going to be working a card or doing something else at Wrestle Kingdom. Like it's happening precisely because Jericho wants it. And in not so many words, that's what Dave Meltzer has reported this week that these two <laughs> wanted this match. Therefore, it's happening. Therefore, shouldn't we all be happy for the wrestlers, Gareth? Is that not the uh, not the motto um, of, of these shows? You know, as long as the wrestlers are having a good time. Who needs such things as an Osprey versus Omega rematch that was built perfectly with Forbidden Door that landed right in your in your lap that you know you could you could have even announced last Wednesday even last Wednesday it was not too late to change course not do that fucking shite backstage segment with Kenny Omega and Jim Ross looking lost in front of like the fake arena with Hangman Page in front of a fucking ambulance like on us on a movie set somewhere could have just scrubbed all that and got to the actual matches people wanted to see. But no, this is the uh, the storytelling that we're doing. Jericho Ospreay, a dream match in, let's say, three men's mind, because uh, we'll add Big Dave to the list there, because you got it first. I, t- I don't even know what to say. Like, do, 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 do you know what I think? Like, there's that sort of, like, badness side of you is, like, I know that in Jericho's mind, he probably still thinks he can go like Ricochet or something like that, and he's going to have some like best of the juniors uh, style match with Will Ospreay or something mm-hmm. where he's going to work at 100 mile an hour. He's definitely going to try some shit here that he can't do anymore, and like end up looking like ridiculous out of the out of the back of it. But I mean, this again, this is this is the sort of match that would be fine if it had six weeks behind it, like, and, and there was a genuine, like, purpose and reason for it, and then you, you could turn around and go, okay, justifiably, yeah, we'd have all loved it to be Kenny versus Osprey, but it's Jericho versus Osprey, and it's because of this, this, and this kind of thing, but that's, you know, it's just, it, it just feels thrown together, just just added on, the, uh, added on the card, and, you know, I mean, we're all only there, aren't we, to hear Fozzie play live? Right? It was always so, coming, that. That was always <laughs> fucking happening. <laughs> I can't Fucking believe they actually announced it ahead of time. Like, it's actually a thing. Like, they, they're outright saying, no, it's happening. 
I need to rip into this so much. <laughs> Go on, Steph. This is, honest to God, like just the biggest fucking vanity exercise I've seen in my entire life. Like, yeah, the only people that wanted this were, were Jericho and Osprey because he's a big mm -hmm. fan. He's like, I, yeah, I've heard all about that. And they didn't even do it the service of fucking building it up. Mm -hmm. Like there's shit they could have done with Osprey before the G1 to start this and then have Don Callis there talking for Osprey. There's videos they could have done, you know, like when when Jericho would appear on New Japan on video before his matches with Kenny. There's all that stuff. But instead we have been subjected to the lore of Chris Jericho and Don Callis. Like every week hearing the story of these two men that frankly, like no one cares about this lore. Like you are not Kenny and Coda, right? There's not teenage girls tumbling about Jericho and Don Callis writing stories, <laughs> imagining what they were doing in Winnipeg when they had hair. Like no one is doing that. But like every week it's been, oh, remember us back together like 40 years ago with bad news. Oh, and it's like, what are you two doing? And then that segment on Dynamite was fucking horrendous, like such bad badly scripted everything it was like sometimes Jericho tries to be like too clever with his swerves like he calls it a swerve within a swerve and he tried to do that didn't work uh, especially when you're like calling back to the Kevin Owens stuff which was actually yeah. good you know just by having the painting there and but Will attacks him and it's nothing like if this if anything this should be Jer Jericho versus Callis and then you know like that's <laughs> all we fucking heard about and and then he's turned himself face so Fozzie can play at Wembley. And I said, I said from the minute this show was announced that Fozzie were going to play at Wembley, like I, I 100%, I would have bet my life on that. And I hope someone has told him that it's not the same stage that Freddie Mercury played on, just like it wasn't the same stage that the Beatles played on, like the same venue when you did Liverpool, mate, you know. And like this is just all like a complete vanity thing and to think that you would turn face on a british guy like for a match in england a british guy that they haven't even like promoted you know it, it's still really like who is will osprey if you watch aw he's like um a mercenary with like no personality or anything he just comes in and has like banger matches but i mean who is the guy and it's just it's ridiculous it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous like this i think this match is like in, infuriating that tony like not that he let it go ahead but like that it wasn't even built well or anything it's just li it this is literally two months ago yeah they because could have the was, was that it's a dream match and Jericho wanted Osprey, which is kind of what he said this despite the stupid angle he did which you know if, the angle itself was ended up being effective, but you know the logic of it was a bit all over the place. It was Osprey was like the eighth person on the show to come out of nowhere. There were loads of negatives to it too, but it was to create like this convulsed, convoluted like blood story thing. When like Jericho literally just cut the promo, I was like, "Yeah, I've always wanted to face Osprey. It was supposed to happen at Wrestle Kingdom, and now it's happening." If that was going to be what he was going to say anyway, could have announced it like. Two months ago, three months ago, could have happened so after COVID. No, I, but then I you would want, have missed. I was I would know. You yeah. would have missed all that fucking Don Callis lore. You know, oh, it's that, just yeah. and also, you know what? You know my undying love for Danny Garcia, and you know I've had my issues with Sammy Guevara, but like once again, these two are just relegated to fucking nobody side characters doing like they're stupid like. We don't trust you anymore, Chris. Oh, well, maybe never leave you, Chris. All this shit. They don't even get, like, his the biggest match he's going to do. Like, it's not even, like, it's even about any of them. It's just he wants to get in the ring with Will Ospreay because Will Ospreay is the greatest wrestler from Britain. And I honestly think that, the like, the bed will be shot because that Adam Cole match does not give me high expectations. But... I mean, he's fucking built up that he's built up the fuzzy appearance better than this match. 
like and also that should have been seen as a, as a surprise it was like the most obvious thing in the world but at the same time it should have been a surprise but do you honestly think he's going to be able to sing and i know i know some people think he doesn't sing live but i will say in his defense watch the videos because like that that cannot be a backing track but like do you do you <laughs> really think he's going to be able to sing and then walk down like the Wembley ramp and then get in the ring and like what <laughs> like and also how bad are musical performances at wrestling shows always like the audio is never works mm. because it's not like it's fine when it's an actual concert at Wembley set up for it but like that's not what a wrestling show is set up for like they're always dire <laughs> Sorry, ran over. <laughs> <laughs> Steph's not into the match. Yeah, I don't think any no. of us are really. Is anyone? I like get. No. <sighs> they could it's... shock us, but I don't think they are. I like like the chat said. Yeah, Osprey's the heel as well. That's the other dynamic. Jericho was always going to make sure somehow that was what the story was here. He gets to be a baby face, but the eighty thousand people sing along to that fucking song. I'll be in the box. That's, so that's we, what, so we did what ask the whole thing Steph, is. You vape what... at Wembley? Do we know? You're going to be able to go vape? Uh, No, you you can't vape at Wembley, but like it is outdoors. And I honestly vape at every show, even indoor venues in America. So I will be vaping at some point, but um, I will will fucking leave the arena for this show. I would even take the risk of not getting back in. Like, Like, I don't know. No, like this much just bothers me so much. I think it's it's just like the absolute vanity of it is just it's so you could have won a bit, isn't it? Because we all know like the yeah. best about the hundred percent. And 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 Dave's like being a sicker fan is going to drive me nuts because Dave's at the point where now he can absolutely say problems with Tony Khan, he can say problems with AW, but he can't say problems with Chris Jericho or or Osprey, like the, like those are his guys. This is gonna be a five star match. He gonna say clear. Give it five before it started. He, yeah, he had. They could. <laughs> they could literally like Jericho could get in the ring and faint, and Dave would write that was a five star fuzzy performance, um, leading to you know like a, a five star ending there because they worked in the story of that fuzzy performance, didn't they? So he just passed out, and it was awesome. Like that that's what could happen. And Dave clearly thinks Osprey is the British Bulldog, which he's not, because he's not even on TV and they're not even giving this this man the chance to promote himself as some kind of British mm. hero or whatever, because they haven't given him anything. He's no Joby <laughs> Tribbiani, that's what I'll say about it. No, him. he's not. <laughs> Can I just say though as well, like Steph said that Adam Cole match, like for me, that was the day after that. Jericho should he should be done for me. Like honestly, that was the Gary Neville performance, Gareth against <laughs> Fulham, when, he was, when he went to Fergie the next day and and, and said I can't do it no more. I'm being serious. Yeah. That was he should be around as like a character, as a manager, commentator. If you don't like him, keep him on telly. But he should not be getting in there anymore because he embarrassed himself, and that was one match too far for me. And that's that that's, it. not filling me with any much hope. But at all, he's better than Adam Cole and stuff. But it's still gonna be um, not looking forward to it. That whole Adam Cole feud like did me in because like 2022, um, he was in my match of the year, him and Kingston. Like I absolutely loved that match, but I don't know when like the downturn started, but like that, not just the Cole match, like the Cole feud was like, I, I tapped out of giving any grace, you know, but we'll see what this is like. Definitely. Well, moving on from there to a, a match, I imagine we're going to have quite a bit left to, uh, to say about. We kind of covered already. It is the stadium stampede. <laughs> we don't really know the, uh, the the layout there, the land there. Presumably, I'm looking at the silhouettes here on screen for video viewers. Um, I mean, that's obviously big show behind Willie Utah. That is definitely for <laughs> the gut. You can see it. It's the shape of his face. Like, Do you really think? Anyone. Do you really it's think they're putting Big Show on it? Why? Why, Beto? Why would he be in it? Going, I know that goes out the window. Steph's going to the media up. event on Friday. They're trotting him out there again. He'll be working you all, talking about, oh, well, maybe I've got one more in me. It's this match, I'm telling you. He's oh. in there. Does my, does my scrum question have to be, what is Paul White's job? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone in Mark Henry, don't think anybody uh, anybody knows. But any guesses on the mystery man? That's probably the most interesting thing about this match. And yeah, Bulldog, Travis Bulldog Jr. Pages yeah, brother. 
I reckon. Oh god, it can't be desperate <laughs> cunt. Like, come on. I um, can't really I see it. I that out so they don't come for me the nights, but yeah, come on. Is that I'd a like... long haired man behind behind Cesaro? Is that a long haired man? It or is, yeah. Am yeah. I just looking at it? Mm. Who could that be? Mm. Are, are you all Dark are you all finally gonna what? Dark Order, maybe it could be a Reynolds. Oh, maybe. I was gonna say, were all you geeks finally gonna get your wish, and it's Chris Hero? <laughs> <laughs> Another non staff favorite. <laughs> that's, that's a shout that. Yeah. Unless you've got any guesses, mates, your mates, mm. their best friends. At least they got to uh, to Wembley, Beno. It's it's Edge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, imagine the, that's the, the moment. big stars are not in this match, Gareth. To keep them for the uh, the proper matches. <sighs> <laughs> like this one, I mean, Gareth. Like again, this one does tell you. I mean, yeah, Liam says here if a homicide ends up being one of the mystery partners, I might change my mind. If it's uh, if it's LAX, even you know that could potentially. Oh, that's happen a shout. Well. That could happen there. But you wouldn't do the mystery partners, then, would you? It's gonna be something daft, like fucking big show, think... Grado, and like you know, I don't know, Dave Benson Phillips or Mr. Blobby or something <laughs> like that. It's gonna be something wild. No, not with the serious <laughs> people, then. Not with the admin, like a uh, BCC. Come on, no. Uh, That's why I'm that. thinking like Bulldog that. and who else is he like? Who's like in wrestling yeah. meant to be like a tough guy or is kind but of? But should this be? To the point, Mino. Gareth, should this be the conversation? Should we not be talking about fucking hell? John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, there's a few deep built up. They're going to get their hands on each other in a singles match fight? No. Um, we don't put help that far in advance. And Eddie only just got back from New Japan, so there's no way we could have possibly uh, done any storytelling before he went away. So, yeah, this is what you get. Um, <laughs> that's the sad part of this match for me. Those two pieces should be in bigger things. Either or, like it's you know, say like Mox and Kingston, but like Claudio and Kingston, at least that's something that they've had there. They've had seeds of for months and months yeah. and months, kind of thing, going back for that long, long period of time. It's something that they could very easily just, you know, put that in place for that to be like singles. Okay, it might not have been like um, top of the list if I was like putting together my dream card or something like that for this, but at least it would have had some logic and some sense to have like have in there with like a, a singles match. But the idea to me that like you've you've got Mox who's basically like carried this company for the best part of half of its existence. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I would I, I would say, I would say, and he's shoved away in a fucking six man stadium stampede tag. Like he should be like, how is he not featured in a massive singles match? Like it just blows my absolutely blows my mind here and the thing with like mystery partners like this is like they've got to be impressive like mm. otherwise they're just well, like them, a, a, they're let down, aren't they? yeah, yeah. You, you, you know otherwise you're in a Savio Vegas situation aren't you kind of thing like, it's like <laughs> who's who's the replacement oh it's Savio Vegas it's like, yeah. sure my who is it who is it oh it's, yeah. it's David it's David Boy Smith Jr great kind of thing like a and the crowd went wild like fucking like nowhere like so I just I can't even think who this who it could possibly be and like it has to be, surely it has to be logical to fit in with the Blackpool That's combat, what I'm saying about, like, combat club as, as, as well. Yeah. It's got to be somebody who fits that thing. And I keep thinking like, oh, the Blackpool thing, is there anything like, like that kind of, is it, and is this a thing to get British people on the show? And I'm like, but who? <laughs> so it's just like, I just can't, uh, I, I just can't see how this, this works. And I, I mean, again, it just kind of comes back to that point before of like, consuming this in an 80,000 stadium like how are we even going to be able to kind of like watch this and you know experience it properly and things like I don't, I don't it, to, to me where you talk about elements of the card looking weak there's at least four or five lads in this match probably who could have been doing something as singles or something that would have had a bit more juice or a bit more like interest in it than just lumping them all or all here into this I reckon this will be a quality match for the TV audience and for the live crowd. Not so, you know, not so much. That does um, look like Big Show, but like Gareth said, like how does that make sense that exactly. these mm-hmm. hard guys know Big Show, the elevation commentator? Like, I mean, I mean that <laughs> you know how how we know Big Show in this universe. Uh, I, I mean, to be it. fair, you, you can't always read into the silhouettes, can't you? Like, the Gang Rules 97 yeah. silhouettes had three members of the DOA and what looked like Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, you never know. Uh, <laughs> whether they yeah, could, could, could it be ex-Shield member Kurt Angle coming back to it? <laughs> Goldberg, Gareth, with Goldberg shaved today. Sure oh, like that. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> yeah, you'd love that. I do wonder if um, the all the stuff about uh, Penta is true. 
if they'll replace the Lucha Bros with um, Santana and Ortiz. I think yeah. like that's more likely like th them being on that side. I mean, people say they're coming back. Apparently, they've worked things out. Oh, um, and I could see that one happening on that side, but I've got no idea who the other three lads are. I can guarantee you there'll be no one I'll pop for. I'll be very surprised if they bring me out someone that I'm genuinely excited to see. We're, we're big two doors to fa down fans, you know, if it's great. Uh, you know. If it's Grado, I'll text my mom. She loves him. Um, I, I do <laughs> have a lot of love for Grado. I'm not sure if he's the guy for this world. <laughs> If it's if it's Lee Moriarty, you'll hear me as the one person in the stadium going bonkers behind the. Uh, I got it. I finished. Yeah, you'd have him. That. You'd have him be Wheeler for the title, wouldn't you? This main oh, event. Main event. Hundred percent. I'd have a three-way Garcia, Gar Wheeler, Moriarty, and a three-way belt. Oh. <laughs> be telling that story for the last three years to build to that, wouldn't he? You know, <laughs> one of those epics. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. There's that one. Um, and speaking of. Throw away multi person matches. Um, again, probably won't spend too much time on this one. Um, yeah, Pangman Page, Kota Ibushi, uh, Ken Kenny Omega is his name uh, against uh, yeah, yeah, Jay White, Juice Robinson, and uh, Takeshita. There we go. That's a nice little trios match for the uh, for the for the uh, for the mums, you know, gonna be a great one, that isn't it? No, um, Benno, did Jay White actually say on collision because I've seen this on Twitter though, right? That basically look up yourself the history of it and didn't bother yes. saying it. Fucking, that is. Amazing. I'm going to give the rats off to that. That is amazing stuff. You know, The law mutants were doing victory laps because of the initial <laughs> promo. He said, oh, see, we're paying off the history of Jay and Kenny and New Japan. And it's like, yeah, because you can literally, the re that up. They're just like, oh, okay. But yeah, they've got history. Or it exists in Kenny's head. But literally, yes, when asked on commentary, amazing. Jay White was asked, what's the history between you and Kenny Omega? Ah, <laughs> uh, you can go look it up. Because he didn't say... <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what the story is. <laughs> He's all made it up. It doesn't exist. It's not on the television. Like it's not. No one cares. Like, who, who but cares that... at this point, let me just channel JP Matt. At this point in 2023, yeah. who cares about the Kota Ibushi and Kenny Omega and Hangman Page standing in the middle of them and who does he love more stuff? Like who's invested in that? Like 10 people? Like. It's fucking garbage, in it? It's garbage. It's not befitting of this show, like, in any way. And if this is Kenny Omega's idea, which, again, is the other one, this is the other one of those matches where people will say that, well, this is the story Kenny wants to tell. Like we learnt with Cody Rhodes, tell him fucking no. Tell him I've yeah. just given you 10 million or whatever I've given you, and sorry, mate, no, the best use of you is this. Doesn't have to necessarily be an Osprey match every week, you know. We discussed it on All In, you know. I'm sure he's not in the same shape he was back then, but it could be one of the many great singles matches he had on Dynamite this year, or in other or in other scenarios. Save for this occasion, built up for this occasion. Maybe like the Kesha match that could have potentially um, been here. Did he even take in that? Instead, we're getting this pretend storytelling. Like Gareth, you've not seen the TV for two weeks. Uh, you haven't missed anything, mate. You haven't told this story. It doesn't exist. A beatdown and a, and a promo that barely explained anything. That's I, I was going to say, I thought Jay White was on collision. <laughs> yep. Like... Yeah, that's it. Can I Why is he with no Callis? Benno, you're saying about the singles matches, genuinely, yeah. Like, any of them three against Kenny would, like, at this point, like, obviously, Juice Robinson at the lower end of that, to catch the, what he's meant to be building up anyway, it should have happened. But even Jay White, if you're two, three weeks out, keep that up as a big singles match, that'd be fucking bosh. That'd be like, I'd love to see that match. But no, mm. not if, if, if you want to lean on law and New Japan law, it's like Bullet Club, IWGP title holders. Easy. Like you can, you can turn the volume up on so many different bits and bobs there, can't you? For a for a one on one, like it, like which obviously would have been better, but. Hey, no, we're, I'm just, I'm just happy to that I get to see, get to see these lads. I'm just happy, happy that we're there in the stadium, getting to watch them. It's a house show match, isn't it? That's what it looks like. It's a proper house show special. I'm glad they're having a good time. Apparently, that's what I, that's the way I'm supposed to think about like the wrestling show we paid all this money to go see. <laughs> Crazy. Can you pull anything positive out of this one, Steph? No. Um, like I said, like. <laughs> Imagine if Kenny had even a tenth of Jericho's ego, he'd be in a fucking singles match. Like, because the man just doesn't push himself for these spots. But when it comes to, you know, you all know I love Jay White. And he, those, Kenny and Jay could have had a great singles That's match. The like, the Jay White. Like, Jay's, 
Jay's match with Kenny um, for, I think it was for the United States Championship. Like, that is one of my favorite Jay White matches. It's probably my favorite Jay White New Japan match. And that was before people were thinking he was good. You know, and I love that match. And there's so much stuff you could have done if they were doing this solo. Because if Tony insists on making Jay carry the Bullet Club name to AEW, could he not at least, like carve out a storyline with the bullet club leader that he took over from like the people i mean i was at i was at madison square garden when some assholes behind me were chanting not as good as kenny at jay white like could he not take that stuff and turn it into a story but no instead we've got all this i don't mind the golden lovers bullshit but it hasn't featured an aw at all it's like it's completely dead storyline they've never introduced Kota Ibushi as a person like if I'm just watching AEW I've got no idea who this guy is no idea what his relationship with Kenny is if there is a great story between Kenny and Kota Ibushi then please at least tell it but like there's just not and poor Takeshita has been doing all this fucking heavy lifting every week having to suffer Jericho and Don Callis and he doesn't even get a good match at Wembley out of it he's just been now put together with Jay and Juice. It, that, like Hangman I just, Page. Like Hangman Page is like... Page is like it's so bad. The way they've used Page has always been so bad because like he he was meant to be like their their guy, their homegrown guy, and they forgot about him once he won that title. And to think they're doing the biggest show ever and like the position that Page is in, it's just it's just not fair. I mean when I saw him win the title at full gear, like that was a moment and that was that was the peak of him and after that they just seemed to get yeah. sick of the guy and it's just it's sad yeah i mean remember like even coming off that you know the, the revolution pay-per-view gareth like moxley and hangman had that banger and that hangman felt hot and we're always talking about him as the main character of the promotion and we always talk about him as like you know the the big we talked about it all in what a success mm -hmm. story you know mm -hmm. whatever you think about some of the book on of him you know he's, he's clearly a star did they treat him like one like where's he been week to week he just disappears doesn't he like yeah. what's the story it doesn't seem to like have any continuity of anything to like build him and progress him further and further, which is which he should always have. You know, people were critical of us when we were criticizing his his title reign and how you know that that didn't live up to really what it could or should have been. But like since then, I just feel like he's just been treading water, and it, you know he has the occasional match where they, they throw him in, and it's you know it's it, it amounts to something something good. But like Takesh does the other one here. Like remember that promo on whatever it was dynamite or something a couple of months ago when it, him and callus and the crowd it was molten heat it was like the crowd were going fucking bonkers booing them like it was so hot and you were just like oh like they've got fucking gold on their hands again here kind of thing with this like let's push this you know i, I thought here you go he's on the fast track there to be in this big like mega heel with callus at his size and like now, again, he just feels like someone who's just sort of dribbled into this sort of afterthought status, really. And now here he is just tucked away in this, uh, in this, in this, in this tag match. And okay, people say be patient. And there's a, you know, it'll, you know, this might be the first seeds of something that then leads that to happen. But again, I don't know. It just feels like he's been on the back burner since that point. And then, um, and then, um, you know, it's sort of like you, you do that whole circle thing of like, no, this is Wembley. <laughs> this is eighty thousand people, and you every 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 time I kind of like get those thoughts in my head, I, I of like just be patient. And then I come back to it and go, patient for what? Patient for this crowd, this twenty thousand card further down the line, or this you know, you know this this big episode of Dynamite or something? No, this is it. This is the this is the big thing where stuff should have been coming to coming together. And, it just it's it's berserk. Like you look at that, you look at that photo, look at that photo in the middle of the screen there. Hangman Page, Kenny Omega, Jay yeah. White, Kota Ibushi, like Takeshita and where where he's kind of been organically got over both as a face and then you know the crowd have reacted to the heel stuff initially uh, with him as well. Five big light like, important lads and they're just shoved away in this match that feels like it's just got no real importance to it at all. It's just there and like again it's this is almost like the like the prime perfect example of Absolutely, everything that's that. wrong about all in is the fact that this match exists like yeah 
And people can make excuses, Gareth, and they will. You know, it'll be like, well, you know, Kenny had his contract and the books, they had the contract and hang around, didn't know what was going on. It's bollocks. They were they, they were headlining with Blackpool Combat Club a few weeks ago. Like that, that 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 big dynamite blood and guts that happened not that long ago. That's not the contracts. If they were gonna expire, we're gonna expire in September, and they were happy to do that. So, like, that's bollocks. That doesn't hold any weight with me. It doesn't mean you couldn't have plans for them for this pay per view. It's garbage. And even then, if you want to give them that excuse once they were wrapped up, and again, you know, the company or whoever you want to say is responsible for them being wrapped up when they got wrapped up, there was still time then. There was still time then to resolve this and pull something out, and they didn't do that either. And you can the other excuse is going to be, well, you know, we need to save something for all out. They booked that too. They booked that. That is not. I didn't book all out the week after all in. They did, <laughs> and this is the negative that you get with that. And they can take the blame for that negative that comes along with it. And they have not navigated it in any way of an acceptable way. And you're right, Gareth. That was the exact point I was going to make. That graphic right there. The fact that Kenny Omega is in this match. I know it's become a bit of a meme now sums up this entire show that is uh, this is the problem yeah. and and it was savable from the point that this match was made because all this needed was mm. this is you know this is a six man i don't want a six man i want you one on one in, yeah. in wembley yeah. stadium because because <laughs> because because it's in, <laughs> insert reason kind of thing and that that could still have been something that at least would have that in itself would have been something like, oh, there's a bit of, he doesn't want the tag match, he wants the singles match kind of thing. And whoever it is, what combination it was, whatever, there was still something there that could have could have been sort of saved and pushed forward and made a bit more important with this. But okay. I think, um, like, and I'll probably get in trouble for this, but like one of the problems I think sometimes with elite fans is that they do kind of infantilize them in a way where it feels like they don't want any better for them they just want them to be cozy you know <laughs> like they like they don't seem to the way that you would want to see, like you know how much i want to see jay white be the guy i would never be defending oh, yeah. jay white being in this match by being like well maybe he wants to be with his friends maybe he just wants to be in a, in a six man like i would be more like no he should be the guy and i think a lot of the times when it comes to the kenny stuff it's like his own fan base just they don't they don't want him to be like the number one top guy doing like main event matches and stuff they just mm -hmm. want him to be cozy and you know like it's 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 wild i don't think any anyone kind of acts with like you know their faves like that like, yeah you're right so, yeah. Well, you know, we've done a lot of negativity here. Should we do a shut up, enjoy it, and enjoy it, Matt? Because this is one of the uh, one of the go tos of the uh, of the Yanks. We can uh, sh can we shut up and enjoy this at least? <laughs> the uh, Darby <laughs> Allen and Sting versus Swerve and our Fox. It's gonna be a laugh on the night, is it not? Coffin match too, Matty. Do the beast up there for you, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, match, you know like, what? I was shaking my head then, and so you and then you remind me it's a coffin match, and I'll nod that way now. <laughs> that like you know. <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna do, and like you'd expect. It'll be great Sting on the night. Some... It will. Yeah, it Sting will. and Darby. I know, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of Swerve as well. Ben when AR Fox has been heated up well, so yeah, mm. it's just gonna be a wild one, isn't it? Let's be honest. And yeah, fair play. Mm. You looking forward to this one, Gareth? Uh, I am. <laughs> yeah. You know, at the end of the day, this is this is this is a match that's like. Like yeah, it's fine to with the level of build that it's had and thing uh, mm. things things and just for who's in the match and stuff like that. Yeah, this is like if this is our tag match that's been you know put together to be on the show. Like like great, this should be the perfect accompaniment to some of the good stuff that's you, you know some of the sort of not good stuff, some of the serious stuff that's booked around it from a singles perspective mm. and thing, things. Whereas actually, I'm looking at this and looking down the list and stuff and just been like, oh, actually, this is probably you know comfortably top three what i'm looking forward to the the most here because it's just going to be 15 minutes of, of fun isn't it you know mm -hmm. <laughs> use that word fun but um it is it's just going to be enjoyable I'm just going to love seeing lo love seeing sting there's going to be some mad shit happen and stuff like that it's just nice nice throw away <laughs> enjoyable in the stadium <laughs> match <laughs> it's a shame because like how high were you on that angle like when they did the angle in the in the in the training school with nick wayne and all that like that was 
you want to talk good booking and good angles, that was very good. Like I said, no, I'm, I'm no, aware I'm, of it definitely now. But like, no, I mean, if Swerve comes in here and he like hangs Sting from the Wembley Arch or something like that, <laughs> and like fucking does something brutal to him, like uh, you know, in the in the stadium, then yeah, I'm all for that as well. If they want to progress the uh, this uh, horrible, nasty side of Swerve and do something fucking mental there, but. You know, Darby's got to be doing something mental in Wembley Stadium, hasn't he? Like yeah, a Royal gotta. Box dive or something like that. You know, there's got to be... You'll have like a stage set up or a scaffold or something, won't he? I reckon something like that, he'll do something wild. You can bet, yeah. I, I'd say I'm, this one, uh, I mean, as well, it's like the Sting thing. I know we all fancy book Sting's <laughs> retirement and Sting's one of your favourite stuff going back uh, many years, but like he... If he doesn't want to retire, he doesn't want to retire, I suppose. So, like, you know, maybe we worked ourselves into a shoot with that one. Uh, is the is the occasion befitting of uh, of your your childhood hero, hero sting? I will like I will not shit on this match at all because, like, firstly, I thought we were getting Sting versus Jericho, and it was going to break my heart to see my man Sting retired in that way. So, mm. few. Secondly, like this match has everything I love in life and on TV. It's got goths, it's got men in makeup, it's got coffins, it's got a man who wears a leather jacket with a fairy collar. It's got some dead dad history that we saw with Nick Wayne's involvement. It's got, that is all stuff that I'm so into. So even though like this isn't like the biggest match or whatever, I think it's fucking great. Like this is what I'm gonna love so much. I don't know if we're even gonna be able to see the coffin like looking down at Wembley, oh, but yeah, like, to, yeah. like to me, <laughs> this is this is cool. Like this is the one that I absolutely can't shit on because I think that Swerve has been fantastic. They always put Swerve with losers, and I was a bit apprehensive when his next guy was Ar Fox. But like that angle with Nick Wayne was awesome. Um, mm. The only bad thing is Nick Wayne being on TV and not being you know really hurt by it. Uh, like if he was going to be on TV, he should have been on the match, but whatever. But Sting, I love Sting so much. I hope I get to properly meet Sting this weekend. Um, and I can tell him about the time. I know I can tell him about the time I refused to let go of his hand as a child, but like, I'm really, I'm glad <laughs> this one. I'm like, and I've seen Sting live like loads of times now, but yeah. Mm. Uh, oh, if we have to endure Fozzie, get the, guy that sings um darby's theme to come and play darby out because i genuinely love that song like not as a wrestling song or anything like that song is exactly how i i would describe the type of music i like so if we have to endure fozzy i'd fly over that dude and he can sing that live it'd be so cool but yeah this is this is goth match i love it I spent far too much of AEW's running thinking that was Darby singer Matt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not the only one of them stories, is it? <laughs> do you think do you think Darby's gonna like skateboard down like a big ramp, or do you think he's gonna do oh, a video be. where he skateboards somewhere like crazy and around London? London like, and, yeah, people like, have so. the yeah. Art, like I've yeah. seen the videos yeah. of it. Like people have done yeah. that. Like he could yeah. Like, are him and Sting going to have a cute little intro video in, like, a London cab or on a London bus or, like, uh, on London Bridge at night? Oh, my God, like, misty London Bridge at night and they meet up as, like, goths and, oh, it'd be so good. Uh, I would take them to, like, some goth clubs and goth shops and whatever. Like, I just love it so much. I love Steve Borden. I bet he's such a, like normal boring guy in real life and it's just like hilarious that this guy in his 60s like makes his money basically dressing up as a goth you know it's just funny like he there's like there's weekend goths obviously but like stings like the opposite he's like a weekend normie oh i love it but yeah sting yeah yes Mm. yeah bring them to camden let's film something cool I'll 100% help them out, but Sting is like, like Sting is what a le- legend should be. He's he's doing great. I just love him. I'm sorry. I think it's everything. Electro works. Yes. 
Jack doing this here for the audio listeners. Real estate Steve out on the boat. Stinger yeah. driving around in a low-top car going back to the chicken shop. Singing Darby in a phone bottle. <laughs> Absolutely. Malnutrition in Blackpool. There you go. That could be your counter. Yeah, well, we did, <laughs> meet, we did meet Eddie King's doing in a kebab shop. So, you know, That's maybe he'll true, yeah, do it this yeah. time with some better company. But I think maybe because I've, I've been so negative the rest of the episode that if you're going to clip anything to make me look like a nice person just clip me gushing over sting because that's <laughs> always what i'm gonna do but my, my heart was literally gonna be broken if he was doing a retirement match with jericho at wembley i was gonna like cry my eyes out but this mm. this is cool like just some cool goth shit awesome yeah i love it there you go Bit of positivity for you folks. Uh, and it'll kind of <laughs> carry on. Um, as there are, there, again, we're not going to lie to you. There's good stuff on the card. Um, you know, um, well, maybe not this. Um, the four way wins match. Uh, <laughs> I was like, think, what's next? And then this. <laughs> I'll be honest, I thought it was FTR Young Bucks. Okay. It's the Ray Ashida, Tony Storm, and Brick Baker. I, again, this is one like, I've said a couple of times. You can pretend there's, there's deep level storytelling in here. Um, they obviously were headed towards this angle with Jamie Hater, and that was probably the end result. But that story ran cold, and then they didn't seem to know what they were doing for six weeks. And then randomly, as uh, I think you were on the spot like that week, um, uh, Gareth, uh, where Sheeda just is now the women's champion because apparently that needed to happen to get to this match. It couldn't just be Tony Storm defending. Um, then we had the tournament because, of course, we did Matt. You know, we like tournaments in AEW. With the champion uh, in it. With well, the champion having I to would- win. I would argue, and I think you made this point on our Discord, Gareth, we got to the right place. Like, this is the four biggest stars of the women's division, or at least three of them. Um, and if you weren't going to do anything else, just fucking put them in a match. I think we kind of held our hands up on this one and went, you know what, fine. Like, yeah, what else are you going to do at this point? Shouldn't be in the situation, but they are. Yeah, and I would say at least there is some semblance. Like, while you can go, like, there's not some deep-rooted storyline, at least there is some semblance of the fact that these four have been on TV in various, like, interacted in various ways for quite a bit of time now. And whether it's good or it's shit or something like that, at least it's something that's not just, like, entirely thrown together at the at the, at the last minute. You know, they have been, like, interacting throughout. And, you know, if, I mean, for me, if this is this is going to be what it is. I'm a big Sheeda fan. I'm like re- I'm really looking forward to seeing her. I'd just like to see her in a singles match. Um, you, you know, personally at, at at this. But at the end of the day, you've kind of got to get Saraya on the cards just because of her level of like awareness and stardom, and she's been central to a lot of the posters and all that and things like mm-hmm. that. She's got to be there. It's it's one of those like logical things. If she wasn't on the card. Whether you you know, even though we're not a biggest fans, you'd be going. It, it's it'd be stupid not to kind of like have her yeah. involved in in some way. At least she can kind of hide in this match a little bit and have people work around her and do other stuff. It makes sense to have Britt Baker involved as essentially the biggest female star that they've had in the history of the company as well. You know, you, you get her into that spot. So as much as there's probably different variants from the women's division that were going to be better than this. Logically, it makes sense for what it is, kind of thing, and I, I can't argue too much. And 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 it'll it'll be what it is, kind of thing. You know, it's not going to be some five star classic. I don't think it's going to be like a two star job. You know, Tony Storm's in the match, isn't she, Benny? So it's going to be a three star all the way down the middle there. And <laughs> entertaining, all the entertaining maximum. enough. One hundred percent. That that's it because it could have gone another route, and we could have just had, you know. A lot of people go on the toilet in silence. And I think these are at least over women in this company you have and being in this spot. Um, you expecting anything out of it, eh, Matty or Steph? Isn't it kind of honouring the tradition of all in by doing another women's four way? You should build that up, mate. The, the rich <laughs> tradition of the women's four way, you know, as uh, lanza has been saying on Voices. You know, we all remember where we were, don't we, Steph, when that rando four way happened at Fighter Fest 2021 or whatever it was? Um, no, no, we, we when we did that up because me and you watched all in together, didn't we, Steph? Like, when we mm-hmm. watched it, like, could we have guessed who was in that match? Like Britt Baker's the only one we could even remember from the all in one. And that you should you know what I mean? That was a big a bigger deal than any of the other four way women's matches AW. I mean, I think I think one. the most memorable person from the first four way is Tessa, but unfortunately she's an awful person. So there is that. but this 
this match, like, uh, I don't know. It's just, you know, Tony can't won't book women. So he just did like shock title change fucking tournament. And now we've got this four way. And I do think, think I'm, I'm pretty sure I sh- it, it was Will, Will Cooling that said this, that like Tony Storm would have been a really great heel like champion going into it because she is ready to slag off all the Brits and she's an Australian. And I think with Sheeta, like I really like Sheeta, but I think that she's going to lose the title here. And then for all the people that were celebrating her win so hard, she got to be what a three week transitional champion after previously being the pandemic champion. I don't really think that's great booking or like a great, you know, nod to her as a wrestler. And, but I I mean, they could put it back on Tony and that would be good. And I think that's, maybe the best option but it makes the Sheeta thing pointless if they put it on Soraya like that's a fucking disaster like I understand she has to be in the card but like absolute absolutely the worst you know person <laughs> possible um and Brits like you know she has um digressed as a as a worker I think we can all agree mm-hmm. I don't know why but she's not the Brit Baker of you know like last year or whatever so this will be fine though but I don't know. I just wish they'd done like an actual women's storyline for the match. Rather, not remember all the green spray paints. That was a storyline. Come on, it was oh, great storytelling, that. week to week, That's dramatic. Four months ago, all the running. That, that storyline was so fucking awful, and like no one will admit to how awful that, like mm. downright offensive that was. You know, I just, mm. I would love to like. I'd love to see what really goes on and know what's really like going on in their heads when they get their creative. Cause mm. I don't know, but uh, maybe they love it, but it's yeah. But um, made by Soraya's likes on Twitter. I don't think she does love it. Um, well, I mean, Soraya has other things she should be focusing on that happens on Twitter. Well, there is that. That's all. I'll, that's all I'll say. And if that cunt turns up, then I'd, I'll leave that faster than I'll leave Fozzie. <laughs> she oh, better not be getting a, a play to the ring entrance. <laughs> oh, I don't know. She, she's already won one battle for her uh, for her brother. Um, presumably, um, she's not going to another one. As Will says here, yeah, literally exact match at all out twenty twenty two. We all remember it with Serene and the uh, no. replaced by Jamie. I'll Hayes. be honest. Every yeah. time yeah. any of these fight, it's like they fought out a million times. These four women, like in some variation yeah. or another, it's. But I do like. I know it's not going to uh, be portrayed on the show. I do like Tony Storm's new character. On collision, mm. them interviews. She's doing well with it, and I did it, like it. It's funny. No, <laughs> Ben, I, I, it's really good. I just don't want to see a wrestle, yeah. but it's it's really good stuff. What she's doing. I think you could have. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say, like, if they really worked with Jay Cargill, she could have had a big moment at Wembley. But I think they yeah. just um forgot, like, forgot about her, pissed her off, and we'll see if she ever comes back. <laughs> That's the Jay Cargill she story right WWE now. WWE to me though, Steph. I yeah. mean, she fit right in in WWE and like be. If I was her, I'd, I'd go. I, I yeah. would go after having this experience. I would leave because, um, you know, she's she's a star and Definitely. she wants to do other shit and they'll help her. Well, on screen now we have uh, the match I thought we were getting to next. We've still just got three to go, folks. Uh, and then we'll have a top of our It's a big show, to be fair. Um, FTR versus uh, Young Bucks. Uh, I mean, Proper listen, match. Yeah, if it happens, match, well. proper ma- I, I don't really have any complaints on this one. I'm glad it happens. I mean, the only complaint I was at, but it was never the, it wasn't the first plan. Like they deserve criticism for any consideration that they weren't going to this and they were going to do something with the fucking dark order. But they got it right. <laughs> this came as a result, apparently, of the, neg- the, the the famed contract negotiations with the books. We managed to uh, to at least talk them into doing a uh, you know an important tag team match, and we've seen them doing tag team matches on Dynamite recently. You know, um, I think we're. Uh, the, I thought the FTR promo on Collision was very good. We'll probably get a, a Young Bucks equivalent on uh, on Dynamite, I imagine, on uh, on Wednesday. Proper tag team match, two biggest teams in the company. Good stuff, I'd say. Yeah. I have like and no complaints, but also nothing to say on this at all. Like I, I, I do yeah, think they're the two. Be a great match, probably. Yeah, I think they're the two best tag teams like in in the world, probably. And I'm being genuine, and they're getting to fight each other. That's great. Like I've got nothing more to say on it. I mean, it's gonna be a good match. 
Gareth, Gareth's Gareth so laughing there. What are you laughing at? I'm, I'm laughing at your face on that line of the two best tag teams in the world. You're not, a tag team anymore. You're not a tag team anymore. They split up. Oh, now, okay. Gareth, yeah. in, in oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, never will be again because the story is so important. You know, yeah. it'll never. Uh, Big moment yeah. when they get back together, but we'll digress. But what I'll say about this match is, is that even if, like, for me, this, even if, like, we're saying the build ups have been terrible to this card, even if this was on another pay per view. These, this didn't need a build-up for me. The, this, as you said, Benno, it's the two best tag teams in the world. Just cut the promos. You don't need a big story for this. And it's the rubber match, isn't it? So this yeah. books itself. And yeah, this should be for me, match of the night. 100%. This could be match of the year. Like, Yeah, it like could be that, it, it, that it, setting, it, it, Gareth. Yeah. Boss, be great. Everyone yeah, with look. the working boots on, everyone motivated. Like, And it's yeah. got that, hasn't it? It's got that edge, hasn't it, Gareth? Where it's like in storyline, but in real life too. Like yeah. it's the Sean Brett thing, isn't it? They're going to want to yeah. like hopefully with better results because we never really got the great, great Sean Brett match, did we? But like you think that's not true. They're going to drive each other. Oh, well, not one step. But one step. Um, yeah, we're, we're not having that conversation. <laughs> Iron Man match. <laughs> oh, you Iron Man match fan? Yeah. Oh. I'm an Iron, I'm an Iron Man match girl. <laughs> uh, that's what drives me and Benno apart. Is my thoughts on that. Well, much well, all their day. best match, but anyway, that's their best match. One day we'll do a plan. And that doesn't say much either, does it, unfortunately? But I do think, Garrett, like this is there's an element of that too, isn't there? An element of needle that's going to want them both to put on the best performance possible on the biggest big, stage. Big time. It's that like competitive edge, the real life competitive edge between them. The, you know, the, as, as, as well as working together, they both think they're the best as well. You know, as, yeah. which, I, which I think, and never mind the other conflict like around it, there's, there's just that competitiveness that, that's going to come in there. You know, the books are definitely doing something here, like uh, gun related. It wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't surprise you. Uh, no. uh, <laughs> uh, one, one minute that they're going to. They're gonna, they're gonna just throw a, a little, a little nod to the crowd, a little something that hundred percent do like, uh, like kind of thing. But I, I can't wait for this. This is, this is gonna steal the show, and it's it, like gonna be well worth it. This, to, to be honest, for as much as I've slagged off the entire card, I feel like <laughs> this could, this, this one match alone yeah. could like just put a smile on my face from a from a wrestling standpoint for the for the whole thing. I think it's gonna be hot as fuck. This. Definitely. Yeah. There is, you there go. A, is there a hard art for the show? Yeah, eleven. Eleven. Mm. This could be. This could. This. This. There could be a fitting tribute to the first All In at the for the last match. Then, if there's a hard art oh. for this. Well, if this, if this is the match you order. Nah, these will go. These will go on. For, these will go on early. The books always go on early on AW, uh, or, 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 or more often than not, don't they? You they were Cody the Gareth get, get the match they, early. They, they, they know the score. Like all of the best books matches in in AW have always gone early. I'm pretty pretty certain. Well, I hope that you're right, and it's not the order. Because if it is the order, the man who uh, cage match has as uh, second to last, then who we did that cage match won't be happy about it. See you, Hook Samoa Joe. Remember that? I That's forgot about this. this. Oh, yeah, you <laughs> forgot about this. Me too. <laughs> I forgot about Phil. <laughs> no, the great book. No, the great, you know, because this is, the, this, again, this is the one that, like, I've, this is where people are going to peg me as miserable because they're giving me, as I've said a million times, Joe and Punk on, on a big show and I'm going to rip it apart. I've lost the will to, you know, give it too much grief at this point because it's it is like the last one. I'll agree with the Americans. It's going to be good in the night. It's seeing Punk with Samoa Joe. Of course, they're going to do it good. Is it going to be good to the level they were in 2004? No. But it's going to be good. You know, it's going to be a good match. The thing about it is, it's just like, again, it, it stinks of the, the lack of forethought and planning. It stinks of, well, hang on, if you were going to do this, surely you'd want this to be the first time they wrestled in 19 years and not a throwaway match in a tournament um, where Punk already won. Um, also, does it make the most booking logic for Punk to... You know, not very cleanly, but hit a GTS on Joe on collision now. So, you know, do we actually, what else do we need to see in this? We, we need to see Joe get his revenge for the roll up win and for being knocked out. Who's the baby face here? It's a bizarre way to get to a match that I should be excited about. It's the one that when the bell rings, I'm going to have a great time, Gareth. But like, I think the thing is, as a big fan, I feel almost insulted that this is the build it's got. Like, I think there's, if you were going to plot out Joe versus Punk on this stage, then it was. 10 different ways to get here, wasn't it? Than, than, than we've got here, and it just it stinks. The one they didn't know was happening six weeks ago, he's had no idea. 
Yeah, yeah, hundred hundred percent. And like you say, having that first match on TV, like you don't do that, do you? If you know you've got this in your back pocket and this is the intended like destination for it, you just like heat it up through that period in in, in different ways and uh, and get to this point. Like you say, in the stadium, bell rings. I'm going to be fucking all over this, loving every second of it. I'm right here for another sixty minute match with you with uh, th- uh, th- th- these two. Uh, uh, <laughs> just just let them let them have the hour again. Go on, and then. Uh, <laughs> but now, nah, the 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 two the, the two good for it to be shit. You know, they've they've mm. been there big time. Know the occasion and everything like that. They'll, you know, they'll, they 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 the competitive edge as well with these two versus other people on the card as well. They're going to want to go out and like have people talking about them and the match that they put on as well and stuff. So mm-hmm. you know, there's going to be some nuance and detail to what they do. You know that the 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 work that they do is going to be right for where they are as athletes, I suppose these days. You know, in terms of what they can and can't do and things like that. So. The, um, I've no doubt in my mind that they're going to have the uh, crowd in the in the palm of their hands here, and I'm um, just fucking all for it. The, the, this is one of those where I'm just like, I just keep thinking of entrances. I just keep thinking of being sat inside Wembley Stadium for eighty thousand and just mm. punks music playing, and I'm just like, just fucking hook that to my veins. Like I don't You'll care. Be on the I, shoulders, I, I, I will. I, I, I will. I will. <laughs> Shirt over my head, everything that I have. Fucking like. Yeah. <laughs> this is the crewy shout, isn't it, Matty? That the Gareth saying there. It's like you know what? We can criticize the fact that Punk could have a bigger match, you know, with a with an equivalent AEW star. We can criticize the booking. But you know what? Fuck them. Me and Gareth are going to get to sit in Wembley and watch some more show versus CM Punk. So, you know what? Everyone else has taken one. So, I'm going to take one. This is one for the sickos. I'm going to have a good time. Well, okay. I'm, I'm not as, like, thrilled as you guys, obviously, because these need to keep this simple for me. Because, as you just say, if they start signing, and because, as I said in Discord, if Punk tries to pick Joe up after, like, 15, 20 minutes, and then it's a GTS, <laughs> this could end up... Is Botchamania still a thing? Because this match could be full of them if they start signing stuff. Just keep it simple. Work the crowd. Do simple moves. Bit of submissions. Mm-hmm. You've got to keep it simple for me. But, obviously, you guys are going to have a good time. And I hope you have a good time watching this one, to be fair. Like. I think we've ended after all this. Um, yeah. <laughs> punk, punk in a stadium, Steph. There we go. At least there's that. I know. I I like as Punk's number one defender. <laughs> the, the other thing we even more than about, me and Gareth. Yeah, we have a goal. When, <laughs> when Benno doesn't defend all of Phil's bad actions a hundred percent, then we argue again about that. And I tell him he's fake. He's a fake <laughs> Phil supporter. Um, but I just I wish they hadn't done this the other month, you know. And then it would have felt really special. Obviously, it's not going to be. This. I think that Joe is Punk's best rival, but this isn't the same as it was like all those years ago. Um, but it will be fun. I will say though, Phil like should have got in there faster with Tony because he's not as quick with the politicking as Jericho is. Because as much shit as those two, as him and Osprey can talk, if Phil had come out on a collision and been attacked by Will Osprey, and Will Osprey had said. CM Punk in a 2020 interview with Digital Spy conducted in Benno's living room with him watching. <laughs> you said that I was the guy you yes. wanted to wrestle. Well, here I am. That would have been a way better setup than anything we've seen for these for these matches. There you go. They could have done the angle in my living room as well. You know, it's possible. I know. Yeah. Absolutely. Got an orange belt there. They could use the props at all times. You know. Yeah. It's the same. Oh well. I. Yeah, that leaves us with just the uh, the main events, which, as is going to be the case on the night, <laughs> we've already had all hundred early, haven't we? We talked about it because we're going to see them earlier in the night. But MJF, uh, MJF and Adam Cole is going to main event things, and we'll see what they do. Yeah, we'll see if it's a heel Adam Cole versus a face MJF, and we'll see how much the investment is in this story because it is, you know, they're doing bloodline things with this now, Matty. They're doing YouTube playlists of sixteen hours longer. Uh, I've watched it. Summer I've of watched Fret- it. Oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> So you must be back yeah. into this. Did you this is cinema, mate? This no, I am. I, I am. No, I. You know, this is up my alley. Save for the story aspect, and mm. I love MJF. Like I don't know if anyone's turned on him in, in like whatever. Like, but I fucking love him. And I think even as a baby face, he's leaning into it amazingly. I think his just his delivery is he's having it up, but in a great way. And Adam Cole's been given the subtle hints, hasn't he? Like he done the old. I said this on what uh, last time I was on the old stab in the back. He done to Roderick Strong and NXT. He's playing that law. He's even done the old, he's done a Steve line. Did you hear it, Gareth, on Dynamite? He was like, I need to beat you, Maxwell. 
more than you can ever imagine when Steve said to the rock at me in his 70s, leaning into all this, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn. So it makes me think, is he? But I think he will do. And yeah, I think this would be great, Bello. I think, this, and I didn't see the match they had on uh, TV a few weeks ago, but apparently that was good as well. So the match is going to be good if it's any good as that, like people say. So yeah, I'm all in for this one. No pun intended there. <laughs> <laughs> you stand still, Gareth. <laughs> I, I, I was in the pub. Say. Are we going to leave early? <laughs> <laughs> the traffic, oh, like the foot. There's leave a few the to go, like. as, as, as long as this doesn't go 45 minutes with Adam Cole staring at his fucking hands for 10 minutes at the end. Like, you know, this is, uh, this is, this is going to be... I, I think this is going to be good because, like, as I said on Spotlight a couple of weeks ago, like, at the end of the day, it is the fucking hottest story that they've got in the company. It's the one that they've pushed the most. It's over with the crowd, you know, like, people have, you know, been well into it. So the Wembley crowd's going to be well into it as well, unless they're fucking bored of them from seeing them in the pre-show already once. Um, but, like, it, it's, you know, okay, it's not fucking Hogan Andre, it's not fucking Rock Austin sort of thing, but it's, <laughs> it's you know, it's not fucking even John Moxley against Kenny Omega or something like that, but it's probably the hottest story that they've actually put a smidgen of time and effort into building in the last three months so probably deserves to be there even if the world title doesn't feel like a world title and these feel like two yeah. sort of mid-card tag team intercontinental champion level guys <laughs> on the way up kind of thing um but it'll still be good <laughs> that's the thing we we think that, i think we're right in saying that that's a consistent take me and jp have had but you can't argue with numbers, can you, Gareth? And you're the numbers guy, and you can't argue with this is clearly working to whatever audience it's working with. It has earned it. I think that's that's the best way of putting it. It's in the, the top spot. Like it it's is, not. It's, it's not the moving the people. needle. It's it's not moving the needle like the needle mover, though, is it? That's the <laughs> <only> <laughs> go, yeah, I love you. I love you. <laughs> but but these are the two counter. It's FTR books and this. They're the two main counter. When we say there's no stories and it's not yeah. been built and yeah, the two been just matches. You, you can make the arguments absolutely with this, even if it's not 100% to, uh, to our tastes. Uh, anything more on that one, Steph? Um, I don't, I'm, I know it's really popular, but I'm not, I'm still not sure that the fans actually want to see them have a match. Like them doing this match kind of just kills their little body storyline. Like, like this is the funeral for all those amazing vignettes, you know. But I have, I have here at the build, I hate the vignettes I was so much so much i'm such a miserable cow like i hate wrestling comedy it's not that i think that funny doesn't draw money is that i think wrestlers flat out aren't funny it's like watching big bang theory and being like is this actually comedy though like anytime a wrestler tries to be funny sorry to all of them that think they're hilarious but they're not but i i just it, it will be fun. I'm sorry, but wrestlers aren't funny. I like you. I agree. This is I take a, a, a hard... there in the corner. I'm John take... Silver. Oh, I'm Silver. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hard stance on comedy, and wrestlers don't cut it for me, no matter how many of them try to do stand up shows or one man shows or whatever. But, um, you know, it's 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 been built up. I'll give it that. It's 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 been built up. But I do think that it's not Wembley headline match, MJF and Adam Cole. Like, good for MJF. He's done great. I'm not sure Adam Cole is the guy from what we've seen of him in AEW. It's never, it hasn't clicked yet. And it's, I don't know if it's a good thing that the only time he's kind of clicked is throwing dodgeballs at kids with MJF. I'm not sure that's like a, the best sign, especially if he's going to turn heel, mm. you know, as well. It's going to make so, MJF um, look fucking butts, isn't it? If that's the case, like the fact that he fell for all this, like, how's he ever going to be a heel again? You know, maybe you find a way. I, I would never like get on board with MJF being fierce. Like, I have to say that when this, when AW started, when I first saw this guy, so he's the best fucking heel I've ever seen. Amazing promo delivery, he never stutters, and even Ric Flair stutters. Like MJF is just like smooth on the mic. He was he would say fucking evil things and just be nasty. And like I just I'll never get behind face MJF. I think any hint of him turning face has always watered down like what they had, which was a true true heel 
in the 21st century. A guy that was doing it on Twitter, doing it in real life, and like properly doing it. And they kind of just gave that away because like, what, like remember that press conference with Jericho was like, I told MJF I'll, I'll teach him how to be a face. And it was just like, oh my God. Please. like this guy <laughs> you know like... he, wants he wants the joker law he wants the oh this is the uh the origin story this is why the... he, he wants a fucking hollywood show he reel wants... he he wants a hollywood yeah. show reel he's on there every week in dynamite trying to show you every facet like i can act like this i can act like this and it's you know like this this guy has literally done so singing and dancing on national television in a wrestling show, he is making a Hollywood show reel every week, and Tony's just letting him do it. It's wild. <laughs> He'll do a sex scene next, you know. <laughs> that will be a celebration if he wins. I'm telling you, it's it, it's coming. He's tried to show us every every part of himself that could possibly work. You robbed the good mediums. segments of the big stars there, like to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's coming in soon. There, let him do it himself. Can I just say on Adam Cole? That's another one who Tony Khan and I'm, I'm, a, I'm probably like you know the high man on Adam Cole uh, out of us four. Yeah, like he's obsessed with him though, isn't he? He's obsessed with him and being. He's so obsessed. It's mad. He loves him. Like <laughs> he, he actually loves him. He loves him. That's honestly like this is my my dark theory my dark theory is that the whole initial push of Britt Baker was because Tony Khan wanted Adam Cole to come to every single party he throws yeah like when people are perplexed about why Tony and Britt were so close it's honestly it's this guy loves Adam Cole and then when he signed Adam Cole he was like we don't need the middleman now like now I'm mates with Adam Cole for real uh he, he loves Adam Cole sense, though, he? yeah he, yeah, he loves him man. And Adam is such a nice guy if you meet him and like he's so lovely and like he does take you in. But um mm. Tony Tony truly loves Adam Cole. Like oh, that's that's his man. Like when when he when he envisioned this Wembley show in his notebook, however long ago that was, he, he had Adam Cole as the main inventor. That's it. Not <laughs> CM Punk, not even Punk or Jericho is Adam Cole. <laughs> that's, yep. But Adam Cole is too nice to like do the politicking that he could do given how much Tony loves him. There you go. And big bills, go. right? And big bills right there as well. And he's fucking yeah. using <laughs> Gareth, though. No. We need to get behind Big Bill even more, don't we? Now? We do. I, I, want Adam, I, I want Adam Cole re gimmicked as Little Bill. <laughs> big Bill, Little Bill, Double put, it, put, it, put, it, put, it, put it. Put Adam Cole in the stonewashed jeans and the boots. And that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Uh, there's a joke there with uh, cardboard Jay Wise as well, but uh, anyway, <laughs> there's, there's your all. You could be the cardboard box. There's your all in. Uh, that's the uh, the entire show. Um, no any way. Final thoughts on it? I know I, I know you were going to do a uh, a runner step before we get to a uh, pro. We've definitely got to make time for the copper box show, or Andy will be very mad at you. Um, but any closing thoughts, guys? On all in, you know, now that we've gone through it, it will be it will be fun. Like I hate when people hear us complain and they're like, it will be like we know it will be fun. It's not about that. Like, it's just, yeah. you know, like, that's not what it's about. Of course, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a great day out. I'm going to see all you guys. I'm going to see lots of other people I know. Like, we're all finally going to be together. Like, all of us in the web universe that that talk, the, the whole IWC will be united. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. So, like, yeah, it's, it's going to be really fun. I'm, like, hyped to go to Wembley. So any criticism is that aside. Um, and before before you talk about WebPro and I leave, I will promote the fact that I have an interview with Andy Quillen going live on my YouTube tomorrow. And it's actually, it's okay. really, really fun. And it's really in depth. And we talk about a lot of things like uh, WebPro's work with AEW, like international title stuff and um, some NXT UK stuff and uh, stuff about Osprey and him double duty and all that kind of stuff. So, do support support that video and support Rev Pro. Definitely. There we go. And if you want to shout out Steph before we uh, we let you go, follow you on Twitter, all the normal places. Yeah, follow me on Twitter. I also just uploaded a video on my YouTube that maybe you guys will like, where I just complain about the All In card. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the algorithm I'm like, will get people there. Don't worry, it'll. Uh, I know, it'll but I even begin it by like you know telling 
sob stories of being someone from this part of the world, fucking ordering capital carnage for a load of shite, you know, like why we, you know, why we do get pissed. And then um, for no reason at the end, I just shoot myself in the foot and do like a whole deep dive talk about AEW's PR promotion strategy that I hope no one ever hears. So yeah watch that <laughs> and yeah follow me on twitter um and i i guess i'll see you all um at all in it too yeah of course yeah, yeah. there you go I I for that. On, the, on the day folks it's gonna be a great weekend you're gonna be uh, very busy as well so yeah mm-hmm. um nice one for jumping on Steph. thanks guys goodbye yeah, you're on a good one see, see you later. Weekend. bye there we go Right, yeah, on that note. Oh, that's back. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to have them privileges behind the back here. She's uh, <laughs> got the power. Um, we should talk to Copper Box. Uh, we should give it a, definitely give it uh, some, some tags. All it's not the only big show of the weekend. And maybe it'll wipe the, uh, you know, the taste off <laughs> a little bit. Some of the, uh, the stuff on this show. I would argue it's got the better matches. Um, there's definitely criticism you can give. I think the Copper Box show. I think you can, you know, Maybe when it was announced, think of like I mean, we'll make that point. You know, maybe expect slightly more um, out of the card or out of the occasion and stuff. It's it's a Rev Pro show, so of course there's a train strike on the Saturday. Of course it's gonna be a uh, be snake bit by uh, by those issues. But I'm I'm kind of ex- I'm excited just to be there. Obviously, the famous uh, other bit of grapple lore is uh, the copper box, and uh, and me having not been there, so I'll finally get to see it, Gareth. After I uh, turned you down for the ticket that time for. Uh, the New Japan, um, <laughs> it'll be uh, yeah, it'll be an experience at the uh, at the very least. But yeah, we're back, and it's uh, you know one of the biggest shows in uh, in British wrestling history. If uh, you know it's uh, it's in the conversation anyway, um, as far as those go. We'll see what they actually do uh, ticket sales overall. But yeah, just uh, briefly, but we'll go through the the big matches, Gareth. Uh, what's your thoughts uh, overall on the uh, the card that Red Pro put together and the uh, the Saturday night we're all going to have on this uh, on this big weekend? Oh, and honestly, I'm really, really looking forward to this. And like, I think it's one of those where, like, you know, going back to you know, going back to COVID times, kind of thing, and like the way that Rev Pro booked from that point, and they kind of like Andy Quilden clearly just like set out his stall. Right, what have I got? What am I going to do with it? You know, the mm-hmm. the, the landscape had changed, and. And to be honest, I, I love this because it's almost like a celebration of the fruits of his labor almost to to, get, to get to this point, really, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Because um, the idea that we're going to be in the copper box and there's going to, you know, from, you know, things that you've you've heard or seen, I'm guessing it's going to be as, you know, it's going to be 3,000 or as near as damn it 3,000 in there, which for a, a British wrestling show in 2023 is like fucking superb isn't it like you know mm-hmm. you think think how at the peak of the brit rest boom it was what was it four and a half that was in wembley arena for progress so for for rep pro to be pulling this like here is just fa- fantastic stuff and like when you when you look down the card like top to bottom i think something that's um that they've managed to just incorporate here is Things that are just that, that feel like they've got that bit of like one off intrigue about them, a ma- like the odd match that just feels like, oh, that's going to be like pretty cool to see him and him go against each other. But then it's also kind of like underneath it, it's got elements where, while I haven't been going to these like Rev Pro shows, I know where you've been to the last few and things, and obviously I've heard you review them on Spotlight and uh, like JP talk about and things. So, you, so you know that there's the underlying sort of like storyline that's fitting in in a couple of these um, these areas as well. So they have got a bit of um, you know reason to be there and purpose, and there's you know a bit of juice behind some of this uh, some of this stuff as well. So you know, all in all, like I, I you know I, I look at this and I. I genuinely can't wait can't wait to go to this show i'm I'm really really looking forward to it and as mm-hmm. and as i find myself in a position where like i'm definitely on a downer as obviously people have heard from the AEW stuff like rev pro is one of those things where i am you know you are looking at it from you know take a step back and you go like it's booked well there's good matches there's fresh people mm-hmm. there's fresh matchups there's good fly-ins and things like that it's probably something that you know should be investing more time in on a you know month to month basis probably than some of the stuff that I'm habitually watching just because oh that's the TV TV product so I'm kind of open been in there and in and around this it's just hopefully just going to be a great day and just be a bit of a catalyst to 
you know, watch more and more Rev Pro, especially now that they're putting shows on. You're able to watch stuff live going forward as well, really. So, um, I'm cool. Tony Khan, it's a shame because I've been at the two, the last two 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 nine shows. I mean, me and Steph were, uh, were at them, and she's not doing this because of the conflict of interest. But like, you know, we'll be honest about it as well. You know, we've got friends at Rev Pro, and you know, absolutely, it's a it's a company. You know, I, I want to see do well, genuinely. Um, but at the same time, it's like those two two nine shows that JP was at the last one with me, just really well built, built solid wrestling, and like. Uh, Colden said it um, in the interview with Steph, and he talked about it with him when he was on with it, with Dave Meltzer. I think he, he outright says to Steph in, in her interview about the fact, you know, Progress have had like, you know, two cards um, over the last while. And in that time, Red Pro are about eight in the middle telling stories for this big show. You know, that's the thing that they do. They do storytelling from show to show, from from place to place. And the stories told in, you know, individual areas like Southampton and Port, but the stories that happen at the 229 that usually lead to the York Hall shows, but in this case, lead to Copper Box. And it's not just, you know, hyperbole when Quilden talks about it. All of the matches on this show have got story. And crucially, for all our complaint about AW, we knew what they were, like, Four weeks ago, <laughs> you know, like that because selling because t- it was so important to them to sell these tickets, they needed the matches and all. It's like to the point, the one we got on screen, Matty, you know, I know you're yeah. not a regular, you know, viewer of Rev Pro or someone who goes, but as soon as that match got out, that's big. T- Will Osprey vs Shingo. I know this like, match, Venom. Even it's I not know been this one. This weekend, it really yeah. hasn't. We we said it at the time. Is this going to be the best match of the weekend? I think it still is. Like, yeah. I mean, FTR books, you know, is probably the one that gives me pause there. But every chat on a, on a British indie wrestling show, there's every chance that this is going to be the best show of the weekend, best match of the weekend. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've seen some of their matches in New Japan and they were incredible. And like, Osprey's not going to let, you know, the, the fans down here is he's going to have his proper mm-hmm. working boots on. And this is going to be an absolute stormer. This, and even just looking down the card, then all like, I'm, a, I'm, you know me. I've always been a ten seven guy. I, I made up to see him go against the uh, Oku for the. Uh, you might be the party. only one, mate. Yeah, I know, <laughs> no I know that. But I'm happy. No, but I'm happy for that personally. That's what I mean. I've, I've seen the um, the uh, when he robbed the belt and stuff and ran <laughs> out of breath around the Screams corner. Screams you that. Yeah. yeah, I loved all that. What do you think I, of yeah. the uh, Enfield No More story? I don't think that's what they're actually calling them, but it's JP's fantasy book and come to uh, life with the whole oh, using it back to Trent and. NXT. Yeah. He needs to lean into it more, as I keep saying. You know, it needs to yeah. be like, you know, working in the BT studios was there WrestleMania. Um, I want more of that. But it's a, that's an interesting angle. Um, at least it is. It. As I say, it caught my eye, Benno. And as I say, like, is he is he is full on heel? Isn't he eight ten seven now? Yeah, is that one. So I can't wait yet. Yeah, honestly, as Gareth said, there, this is going to be even up and down the names on the card for me, like subculture, but exposed mm. to them in impact when they they turned up there, like. And they're on this one made up to see them. It's like old school, like 2018, 19. I was going to shows, Benno. It's like I've seen these on telly now, and I know the British base, but I'm glad I'm getting to see them live. I'm actually can't wait for this one because they impressed the hell out of me in impact. And have you seen the Lost before? Never seen them, never seen the Aussie oh, Open match that people raved on about. Yeah, yeah. So this mm-hmm. to me is gonna be another one. I'm fucking absolutely storm like. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, all, all all three of the matches that you know yeah. talk, talk talk about there, you know, they're they're all good for different reasons. Like you know that Shingo Osprey, just as two names put together, always have a special place in my heart. Just it was the first ever number one on the Grapple One Hundred when you know the yeah. first full year of Grapple. So it's just always just something that's just cemented in my brain. The amount of graphics and pushing of that that I did and seeing it at the top of the thing on the app all that time and stuff. So you just see those names together and you're just like, oh fuck. Yes, I'm seeing Osprey Shingo in the flesh this weekend. That's that's amazing. Like the like you say, that tag match velocities have y- y- delivered every single time that I've seen one of their like hyped matches to to to, to watch. And then you know I've definitely uh, enjoyed the subculture stuff that you know seen this uh, seen this year as well. And just seeing that kind of like. I don't know, like when we talked about them on the, on the, that Impact show, like mm. just the just the. <laughs> Just forgetting what high level wrestlers they are, and you almost forget because because of, because they've been hit because they've been hidden away. I I never liked the Flash Morgan Webster gimmick of the um you know the old the the old fucking quadrophenia thing. Like I hated that. Like it was not something I liked, but. You know, is a is, is is a wrestler that you see there. It looks like he's had a break from injuries where he's had had a bit of you know he's obviously had problems with them over the years. Is he looks in fucking great nick. 
it looks like all the stuff that is um, you know put together over the last last few years has just come through to fruition. And, and Andrews has always been like, Andrews has always been like mm. consistently high level, no matter what he's done, whether it's tags, singles, or anything like that. For a decade or more now, fifteen years now, Andrews has been like like top top. So it's just going to be great to see them back on a on a on a stage like this. But arguably the better because of NXT UK as far as well. Guys, yeah. I haven't seen them a couple of months in a row. Just seeing them in person, like you know, as much as we make fun of Enfield. You can't go there and not learn something. You know what I mean? Like they've obviously they're even they're even tighter workers than they were, and they've somehow come out of it without the stink on them. That I think some of the XNXT UK like they're not people who'll be like, oh, put that shove them in a stable with Trent. Like absolutely not. You know they, they've still yeah. got a lot of goodwill and they're still very exciting and dynamic. They feel modern. They feel current still. They don't feel like stuck like stuck in the muds. Like I think you maybe get with uh, with some of the older British talents. Yeah. They're still well up for it. I've loved them in Impact to be honest, and I've loved them. You know the couple yeah. of times I've seen them in Rev Pro recently. Yeah. They've been great. And they they always work at art as well. The pair of them. Yeah. They always they're, they're always like want to want to make the most of every every minute that they've got out there. Like the, so so again. You know, mm-hmm. can't, can't can't say fair on that from that standpoint. For me, though, like I look at this and I just see Tommy Iruishi mm-hmm. against mm-hmm. Luke Jacobs, and like you know, I just like Luke Jacobs, you know, someone who you've seen going back years and years, seen as an absolute young kid kind of coming through, and then just seeing him now on this stage where he's proper thickened out. He's had all these years of experience now on singles when poor Ethan Allen's obviously been out of the game from an injury standpoint. So Luke's gone on his gone on his own and become become his own man. But like, mm-hmm. you know, him in there with Ishii and just like I feel like now Jacobs has probably got the confidence in himself to be going into a match th- like this now yeah. and not not get eaten alive kind of thing. You can go in there and like actually I'm gonna grasp this opportunity and I'm gonna fucking you know lay it in and have a good hard it and battle it with Ishii and I, I, this is like for for yes Shingo Osprey's got that kind of like gold standard kind of thing up there. This this is a match that I'm gonna fuck I'm desperate for this one. I cannot wait. The, as soon as this was announced I was just like oh watching these two oh, big fuckers yeah. knock shit out of each other. It's gonna be is, great this this is proper big rev pro show stuff. Like over the years, it was Zach, it was Osprey in that role against the import, you know, or it was another import like with Keith Lee. But there was always, you know, that that person who like that who represented Rev Pro who was going against like an Ishii or a Suzuki or whoever it was that was that was in that that month. And there's not many of those matches left on the table. If anything, Osprey and Zach are now on the other side, aren't they? They're the they're the import yeah. coming in, and you know, you want a young guy to step up and be the, the perfect uh, opponent for them in a, in a lot of ways. This is one of those rare ones that's still there, and it's you're right. It's coming at a point where Luke isn't. Don't get me wrong; he's not quite a name yet. He's not quite there yet, but he's getting to that point where, like, this feels like it's going to be a really important match in his career. This is going to be a match we're going to look, off, look back on and go, "Oh, he was great." And then there was the remember the Ishii match, and then from then on, he pushed on, and he was, you know, a, a name. You know, because it's going to be yeah. the eyes of the world are going to be on this. It's not going to just be the three to four thousand people in the copper box or however many it, it turns out to be. You know, every, this match is going to be watched. You know, on Red Pros on demand. It's going to be available, and people are people are going to rave about this one. I think people come out of this weekend talking about Luke Jacobs, and he's already got a bit of a name. But it's going to be it. He's going to have a name after this weekend, honestly. Mark my words. And like you say that about the Rev Pro thing, you know, go all them years back and think of like the Osprey Acada. Like uh, yeah. obviously that really helped put Osprey on the on the map all them years ago, with, um, and that relationship built there. Like this is again prime opportunity. Like you say, Jacobs just mm-hmm. to to make him make a name in, for himself in there with someone like Ishi, who you know. Get it. For for the type of wrestler that Luke Jacobs is, like he couldn't be in there with a better guy. You couldn't have booked this better. I don't think for a time in his career to potentially be that pivotal moment that just fucking rocket ships him to the to the next level, or at least opens the door for him to fucking rocket ship to the to the to the next level. Like, I. Yeah, you can see my enthusiasm for this one. Like, oh, you're loving this. Doesn't happen with Brit Rest these days, does it? it? No one oh, is just... one. As soon as the match got out, I knew it was for you. I knew it was yeah. for the Ogdens. It's for anyone who, like, you know, saw the, you know, Luke and Ethan, which, you know, mentioned in the chat there, like, people hoping he's in his corner. You know, obviously, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. But anyone who saw them coming up in, in Future Sock 
or you know the Tetsujin match that we raved about at the time it happened, or when they took it to Germany, you know, a bit further on, but going years back to when they were just names I hear the Ogdens mention a lot, the young guns. I always say it like fighting spirit mag when I was writing for that. They were gonna be like the next one to watch on there because they just felt like they came out of nowhere. These two shooters that are attached to Chris Ridgeway and they're they're very young looking, but they're gonna be great. And it's like you're seeing that development now, unfortunately, you know, with with Ethan Ethan being out. But with Luke Jacobs, you're seeing it. You're seeing he's becoming, you know, for of a better term of man, isn't he? He's, he's stepping into that kind of role of like, he's a bit bulk. That was the other thing me and JP were saying, seeing him live at the 229. He's just a bit bulkier now. And he just feels like more of a man, more like like he belongs. Like, and for, yeah, people like you, Gareth, who were there on the uh, the ground floor with them and the Ogdens and the others, like, it's just brilliant to get to see at the Copper Box of all places. Going to see him going back and forth with Tomohiro Ishii. It's crazy. Unbelievable. Brilliant. Brilliant. Love it. <laughs> the rest uh, is alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, from one for the uh, for the dads, or uh, or one for uh, for Gareth and the Ogdens, and uh, me and JP and all that. Uh, one for you, Matty. Uh, one for another type of dad. Um, we've got a uh, yes. the freeway. Alex Windsor, Mickey James, and uh, and Hi Ann. I know you're uh, happy to see uh, Mickey James live. Genuine star that we were talking about. Yeah, this. like yeah. she is. You know, me and Steph were talking about it um, off air before. Like you talk about like. You wants to bring a big women's star into this. You might, you might not, might not have got immediately gone for big dream card Mickey James. But can you think of a bigger women's star that Rev Pro have had in the past or would have here, Gareth? Like I can't. And I think, you know, to you, to you, Matty, like Mickey James yeah. is like genuinely a yeah. another, one of those prestige stars in in American women's wrestling, isn't she? And she can still go, and she's been great the last couple of years still. In Impact, she's been was amazing in the last run, and as you say, though, Ben, like. It's, she's one that the, the fans haven't turned on, like even online or whatever, however we call it, the IWC. Everyone still is a fan of Mickey Jane because she is still good. You know what I mean? Mm. So yeah, I'm I'm over the moon to when I heard she was on this card. Like you know, I'm not too familiar with with the other women in this match, but you know, I'm sure mm. they'll be a, obviously as the champion, it'll be a Windsor. Like it'll be good. You know, so yeah, I'm looking forward to this one as well. Mm. They were building her up well as well. And it's interesting they've gone the three-way route. I think a lot of people maybe just expected it be Windsor the heel against Mickey James, you know, the big import, maybe something to do with that. Stuff like that. Well, someone's gonna lose too. Um <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but it's a good spot for Hyan as well, who, you know, her last run in Rev Pro was very well regarded. And you know, it's nice to to kind of see her back in the mix as well. Um out of a, a women's division in Rev Pro that's had a lot of problems. Um, you know, and people leaving and, and other issues like it's yeah it's a really solid match for them to to get to, to put together and yeah uh mikey says they loves this current alex wins and again i can only say based on recent 229 vintage like there was uh that segment on the last show where the uh, the mic kept breaking and maybe it went a bit long but there was just something about her now i'd say gareth when you when you see uh at this show she's got the character down now it feels like and she's got kind of the confidence that maybe you know you might not have seen in the past and she can catch she's really carrying this uh this heel kind of head of the division character so i think she's gonna oppress impress a lot of people um on the night as well um we mentioned michael oku and trend seven yeah so talk kind of talked about that one good to see michael oku on the uh, the big stage not sure on the story yeah uh, i hope he gets his belt back um and it's not on a no more uh left standing at the uh or uh enfield no more left standing at the end and i don't know who could come, who could come out the crowd who could it be uh, I don't know, sam grabwell or you know joseph connors or something like that gets involved in a <laughs> an else trend seven win i assume it's a baby face win for michael oku and onwards for, for, to better things with that one got yeah you know that's that's kind of the moment that you'd want at the end of this show isn't it but you know mm -hmm. it gives them that opportunity to do something i suppose in this that then just sets something else up going forward you, you know beyond this um beyond this too you know i think that's something rev pro have done in the past isn't it not treating just like a a moment in a moment but thinking about what's coming next as well so you know potentially there's um you know surprises up sleeves and things like that that might come uh might, might come along the way but it's just wild, wild to me i mean you know you put the the graphic up there you know like Zack Sabre Jr. is one of my top 10 all-time wrestlers. And, and, and like I just like Zach's on the card as well. Like you just forget, kind of, you know, it's just a gonna see Zach live again. Unless Tony that's, does that, a battle royal. What are uh, you gonna see him this weekend? You know, that's uh that's that's brilliant. Great, you know, to get Ricky Knight Jr. in there. Obviously, he's had a mm -hmm. you know for a period of time there with Rev Pro, you know, he was he was one of the guys who Andy sort of, you know, pinned the uh, pinned, pinned the flag to kind of thing to 
push a bit harder and things like that. And he's definitely um, had the positivity coming coming out of that one. So that's that's one that I'm uh, looking forward to there. We're this deep into talking about it, and we still haven't mentioned the words Shabbat. Like Shabbat yeah. is on the fucking card, you know. Like it's just like it, it, the the death. Who thought that this, would happen? Oh, like, you know, mm. I was get that impatient. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. There, <laughs> it is the draw. <laughs> That's the bad thing. Get out from Matty. Is he actually that big side? Oh, yes. good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and David Finley, no. Keep him the booker off us. Just get him as a manager. I used to love him when he was with Jay White. Yeah. I, I, I thought that. Is that not you in a beret at the back? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is for people who listen on the audio that know El Fantasma was uh, teaming with Shibata. Um, he was his mystery partner against uh, Gabriel Kidd and David Finley. Um, Gabe Pitt's ca- character work in the G1, like, I know it's not been for everyone. He can go cross that line to being too cringe at times, but there was something there, definitely this G1. I kind of started to see it a bit more. Um, yeah, the, but the We'll see how he how it translates to uh, to the Rev Pro shows again, but I could see him kind of uh, eating this match up, and yeah, El Fantasmo has got all that history with Rev Pro, so it's good to see him on a yeah. on a big Rev Pro eleventh uh, anniversary card, and yeah, Shibata in person like sells itself, doesn't it? It's you know, it's a, it feels like it's a different incarnation of Shibata. It's a very different run to the original Shibata, but there's going to be a lot of people pinching themselves that they get to see him live in a you know you know a world where we never thought that was going to ever happen again. It's like it's really cool that he's on this show. Just sitting there in the copper box and that music hitting, it's just going to be cool as fuck. Like, oh yeah, that that's <laughs> going to be it, is it? Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait. Um, elsewhere on the uh, on the cards, we've got a uh, Dan Maloney against Leon Slater. I think that's a really good cool little match to get the you know, pushed commodities in the in the in the company on there. Leon Slater is another one turning a lot of heads. He's uh, I think we saw him at TNT, didn't we, Matt? And that uh, you know they did yeah, the, uh, the yeah. Ultimate X thing. I know you were a, a fan, fan of uh, of him there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dan Maloney was good on the last two two nine show. I don't often <laughs> you know me with Dan Maloney. I'm scared to say anything about him. He'd kill me. He'd eat me for lunch. But um, it's still weird that he's a cruiserweight. But you know, well, okay, let's just go with it. Um, it's two cruiserweights, I guess. This match, uh, Dan Maloney and, uh, and Leon Slater. But it feels like a good stylistic matchup to be honest then yeah a couple of uh Midlands lads uh done good um solid bit of booking I think for your uh for your undercard um the added very late um but makes sense uh speaking of cruiserweights uh cruiserweight six way uh Connor Mills Robbie X Wild Boar Jordan Briggs Shah Samuels and Callum Newman um expect flips and um, probably yeah, not from Shah Samuels but from everyone else <laughs> it's, maybe not match, yeah. good it's going one. on first yeah. in it man it's yeah, like, it's solid, yeah this match 100% is like, and I get it because, you know, even Red Pro Vent, this AW Avent, and all the multi mans they've got absolutely on your biggest show. Exactly. Y- you have to reward your roster and give them the spot. And yes, it might be a little bit, you know, janky having Shah Samuels and Wild Boar in there, but these are these are your, these are the regulars that were kind of left off the singles matches, and it's a nice, you know, little thing to do book wise, I think, as well as there's a women's uh, rumble as well that's uh, that's happening for number one contendership as well that will get you know the the women who haven't been used on the uh, on the show and the on the card as well. So no complaints with that. Love we all love a bit of Robbie X as well, don't we, Matt? Big uh, oh big yeah. Fans of him. Yeah, mm. purely. I'm look, this, made up. This looks like a, as you said, they are more excited for this than, than all in, to be honest with you. Now, the question <laughs> is I mean, we the other match on there, just to say, JJ Gale, Kose, Fujita. Uh, JP will be excited to see Fujita uh, in yeah. person. <laughs> this is that. Oh. One, of his, uh, one of his young boys. But they have got, I mean, with the main event, Shingo Osprey, which we do know is going on last. Do we think Jericho's turning up? Like, what are the chances? You know what he's like. We just watched all in. We just saw the Pentagon spot. He's gonna want to do it, isn't he? He, he wants the eight thousand singing yeah. for him at Wembley. He's gonna want to do something with Osprey and get that viral moment in front of the thousand fans at Rev Pro. It's a hundred percent happening. I think. What what say you? Oh, I mean, it's right up Jericho Street to do something like that. It's just become a trademark of his like post WWE run, hasn't it? To be doing mm-hmm. little things, uh, things like that. If you get that, if we get that moment, just in that mm-hmm. you know smaller crowd and things like that, that's just going to be the fucking cherry on top of the icing on top of this cake kind of thing, uh, really. For that, just to just to get that, if 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 that happens. It'll be uh it'll be be fucking awesome. You should put that in my head now, Benno. <laughs> hey, it was mentioned in the chat, not me. Um, but I well, believe that's what it. I mean. Um, Will there be any other AEW people do you think like 
in a tent, like it will they'll pay. Sorry, should I be there for like a brother in the crowd or turn up? You just you don't know, do you? Who's, who mm, might show no, up? To be might do something there. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. conspicuous uh, by his absences, Roy. Um, hmm, wonder what's going on there. Is that sorry? Uh, wonder what's going on there. Um, maybe he's sorry, getting yeah, yeah. match it all in. I'm just thinking mm. about all in reviewer 2018 and like obviously the the Jericho Penta spot and things like that. Yeah, you know, there's mm. it, it, it's not just good. He'll do something creative if if he does like if if shit happens, you know, he'll he'll, he'll be creative as well. Like it won't just be random running either. I thought there'll be a, there'll be a cool moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's I'm sold. I'm sold on that idea I, now. Whoever says that's going to be the show of the weekend. I, I really feel like. <laughs> Like, it's got it all in. It's got it. We're going to go to that on Saturday and we're going to be like, all in yeah. better be fucking good today. And it's going to be at Wembley. So, you know, it's got that clear advantage. But still, you know, um, I think we're going to have a great night on Saturday night. And it's, yeah, it seems like uh, a lot of our, uh, of, of our friends are going to be there as well. A lot of our listeners are going to be there as well. So, yeah, keep an eye out for us for a, a pint uh, before or after as well. We've got a busy weekend, boys. <laughs> it just hit me now. Like, we've got such a fucking busy weekend. I, t- I, t- I, tell you what, I tell you what, if you're listening to this and you're in London that weekend to go to All In and you're not going to this Rev Pro show, yeah. get a fucking ticket for this Rev Pro show because, like... Mm. It's gonna be a fucking banger. Just when you sit and you just put it out in front of you and just talk about it like that, like, like you, you can, I, I just, I feel this. I've got this uplift of enthusiasm for this weekend. It's just come across me there, just to to, talking through this match by match. Like I, I cannot be, wait for this show Gareth, now. You'd be doing one twenty down the motorway now. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one I mean, stop, he, he, one stop now, Matty. Not yeah. two. <laughs> well, he'll slow down when I tell him what else is on this weekend. It's going to be a very brief run through. It's like four minutes. Um, progress. <laughs> I've got a show. Remember, um, same day. Um, we have the uh, the Fi show on uh, on the Saturday uh, Saturday morning slash afternoon. Uh, that's got Casey Navarro v Nick Wayne. This might actually scream you, Matty. Shafi Gabriel Kid v- Vixen, one of uh, JP's favorites from the weekend show versus Hyan. Bollywood Boys versus Sunshine Machine and Kenta versus Mark Haskins. It's just like, what? <laughs> That'll be all right. Like, you love a bit of Haskins, don't yeah, you? Yeah, uh, do. A bit of a mid 2000s Brit res, that is, isn't it? <laughs> With the afternoon show will be in progress as uh, it's clovering time. Uh, which will be head to head with uh, with Rev Pro. Good luck, lads. Uh, Lizzie Evo versus Kanji. Simon Miller be temp to take Mayfairs. Lana Austin versus Raven Creed. Paul Robinson versus Nathan Cruz, Kid Lycos versus not this Benno Bullet, um, Nick Wayne versus Leon Slater, Ricky Knight Jr. versus Davey Boy Smith Jr. Yep, they won the uh, Getting British Bulldogs uh, Sun Lottery, and Spike Trevay versus Kid Lycos too. Gareth, it's at the Electric Ballroom, mate. Did you ever think there was going to be a big Wembley weekend and there's going to be an Electric Ballroom show? Could that be less appealing? Like, come oh, on, mate. <laughs> I mean, God, when I think of my multi-year progress season ticket and then the idea that I'm going to be down into down at like Wembley uh, for that weekend and like this is happening and I like, God, talk about an afterthought when you've just gone through that Rev Pro show and then, you know, you look at what they're serving up and then you look at and you look at what progress is serving up here. You know, it used to, you know, you think back in the day, it used to be like, who's the number one company kind of thing. And it was like a genuine sort of argument really for, for mm-hmm. different reasons between between the, the, the two. Like, it's not even an argument, is it? Like fucking, what, if there's going to be 3,000 plus people in the copper box watching Rev Pro with that card that they've got, this is like, you know, what, going to be a couple of hundred in here? Like at best in the ballroom sort of thing, watching this, like, oh, it's... It's uh, it's 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 wild. Just just looking how different different this is, and just how much lower level it is. Like, like when I don't even like been genuine. Like, why are we even talking about this? Like, you've got things. Like I know. Car- I know. You've, got, you've got cards like Riot Cabaret on this weekend that I guess is probably at a similar level to pro- what this progress card is mm-hmm. and things. Yeah, you know, there's there's other other stuff happening. This is just. It's 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 just there. Nike's it? right. Leon, 
I was about to say that. Yeah, that would that's be a good match. I was annoyed that was here. That's the one. <laughs> but I still wouldn't skip the coffee box. For how they're going to figure it out with like the travel and stuff like that's going to be interesting. How they're going to get the people back and forth because there's a couple like that. Um, obviously we've got uh, Ricky Knight Junior as well who's doing both shows. I presume <laughs> we'll never know. Maybe Davy Boy Smith Junior might end up doing double duty in some form somewhere. Um, maybe not Rev, but maybe he's more. Uh, maybe he's more up Tony Khan Street. But you're right, Garrett. That's the the level of coverage he deserves. This point, so it's a it's an irrevel, irrevel, irrelevant promotion that runs how many times a year now? Um, it doesn't matter. The people who are gonna go are gonna have a good time. The mutants who go, you go every time, still. I don't know where they pulled them from, they do still exist, and this is their day out. And they will choose this over Rev Pro. But I wonder for a hundred quid as well. <laughs> yeah, you've got to get both tickets, haven't you, for both shows? Um, yeah, oh, it's, it's 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 wild, like that's the the mm. the sort of going off the Davy Boy Smith Jr. is the big the big name on the card here and we've just been talking about Shingo and Shibata and like stuff like that at the uh, copper box like wow different world different world there you go and the fight show looks all right I mean to be fair if you could just buy a ticket to that like you know you know I might do that but no not a chance they can get lost um so yeah, other than that, like you mentioned there, Gareth, other stuff going on over the weekend. Um, and I'm going by uh, by JP's uh, notes here. Uh, Eve versus Gato move Chaco Pro. Um, he might have uh, thrown some uh, some spanners in the it's, way. It was it, it was your fa- it was your favorite Gato move Chaco Pro wrestler, Bennett. I think it's probably the Orange Panacotta, uh, Chika oh. Shikawa and Sayaka, um, especially when they team with Session Martina. Oh, they're, they're actually teaming against, uh, and it's written in front of me against Debbie Gaita- Kaitel and the Royal Aces. So yeah, oh. there you go. Um, yeah, you know, I'm sure that that'll be well attended, and the people going to that will have a you know, be will be uh, will be very, very into it. So, yeah, but that's uh, cool that that's happening. Um, and Riot Cabaret, as you mentioned, um, is on the uh, the Friday. I think you can get tickets for a fiver, uh, I've heard before, and uh, that's got Sunshine Machine, who are actually conspicuous by their absence on the on the big Red Pro show. I think they're the they're the missing uh, pieces as, as far as uh, you know, uh, well booked uh, big parts of Red Pro lately. Um, that should probably be, uh, be on there. We'll see. Uh, against uh, Joshua and D'Angelo Bolarama, remember them? This is uh, Tate Bay versus and James Ellis, Sapphire Reed versus Livy Grace, Danny Luna versus Nina Samuels for the women's title, and the Session Twats, uh, Session Martina and Charles Crowley against the Greedy Souls. Another, uh, another team here. Yeah, who are uh, kind of missing from the uh, the Big Red Pro Show. Sure, they'll all be involved in a uh, in some form. Um, any chance of getting you to ride Cabaret on Friday? Go up the motorway a bit earlier, uh, Gareth on uh, on the Friday. You know, beat the traffic. I'll be watching the Book Club in Birkenhead, mate. Uh, <laughs> uh, apparently, the Eve shows have sold out. You know, well done to them. Genuinely, that um, says says a lot, doesn't it? So. That's cool, um, but yeah, that's it. Um, as far as uh, stuff we were uh, we were going to cover, there are some little uh, odds and ends shows uh, going on. Uh, some Ricky Dink show going on on Monday. I'm not talking about that, but outside that, it's going to be a fucking busy weekend. Um, big show going on on Sunday afternoon um, with us there. Is uh, all in it? Obviously, is the big one. Meltzer and Alvarez. We won't preview that. That's going on. Uh, the, the around the same time as us, so we're not uh, we're not we're not plugging the uh, the Monday enemy night in. Wars, isn't it? It's the Sunday <laughs> fucking afternoon wars. This one, <laughs> but actually very early, so we're going to Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. We, we sold out. Sold out anyway. True. Jam, True. jam, jam packed to the rafters. <laughs> and in fairness, they're sold out too. So you know, well, well done, lads. Well done. Um, of course. Oh, oh, Nigel McGuinness is doing magic. <laughs> there is that too. <laughs> anyone going to see? Anyone in the listeners going to see Nigel do some uh, some. Card tricks uh, is that one? Is that, that real? Uh, is that a real thing? It's a real show, yeah. I think it's on. It's on the Monday, is it not? Um, yeah. Um, there you go. Look forward to that. That'd be good. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Might be better than seeing him wrestle in 2023. He could be one of your mystery men in that all-in match, you know. I like um, Desmond Wolf better, but you know. <laughs> Desmond Wolf. <laughs> oh, yeah, you would like Desmond Wolf, just not Nigel. Well, really. yeah, what, what's he been saying lately, Beto, that I haven't heard you mention a lot on our conversation? <laughs> His title opportunities. <laughs> Fucking awful, <isn't> he? <laughs> <laughs> Dirt worst comedy. Uh, yeah, you know, you watch Tony like dust him off and get a little pop at, uh, at Wembley. He might end up being the baldy in the back, and it's not big show. Can I mention what else one you thing as well? Well, Are you about, about the, you know, the impact show, like the sub uh, subculture? Are they flying hmm. out to go out to the next day? Like they must be on the flight straight away after the uh, Saturday yeah. show. Or the wrestling emergence show they've got. Uh, they're on, they're on against the, the, the rascals. I mean, that'll be, that'll be a great match as well. 
They're on the next day against the Rascals. They must do that. Oh, it's the next it's Sunday, right? You're right. Yes, it's the Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they must yeah. be doing. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. Good on them. <laughs> Fucking hell. I know. They could be having two stormers within two yeah. days there, to be honest with you. Odd choice, though, isn't it, to put that show head to head with all in? Like, I mean, or on the same day as all in, I guess it won't be head to head. Well, you're not saying that main event of a Shanada v. Jake something's going to draw it on. <laughs> Shanada, mate. Nada. <laughs> Even your mate Russo couldn't make him interest them. No. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. Is there anything else we're doing that weekend? Any, anywhere else to go? Anywhere else to see? What's your, uh, what's your number one thing you're looking forward to, Matt, over the weekend? Well, non wrestling is Morley's. I mean, I've, I've built this up so much on the pre show as well and stuff. I need to try them all. I know it's not for you, Gareth, like, but I'll hopefully be dragging you. Through. You can get a portion of chips, can't you, mate? <laughs> 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 but yeah, as I say, just as what I've said before, boys, like, you know, the wrestling's going to be sound. We'll have a good time just seeing everyone. Obviously, the live show I'm pumped up for. I can't wait to just converse with everyone and, and have a good time and just yeah just looking forward to it just want to get there gareth be here be belling you 7 a.m mate to get, to get you up <laughs> that's it i like my weekend it's going to be being matty's wheel man I'm, yeah. going, to be, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be the uh, going to be the kevin, kevin nash to his steve austin like, yeah uh... i'm scared i won't be passed out in the back though like members of the click gareth i'll be here uh, behave myself <laughs> Hello. Well, I'm gonna see you guys down there. I'm heading down there tomorrow. So yeah, with that in the ads, thank you, patrons, for staying up with late with us. Obviously, we started a bit late, so we're finishing late. It's uh, twenty past one at this point, and uh, I know Matty's got work at nine, and Gareth's probably started even earlier. So, thank you, patrons, who've been stuck with us. A few a uh, few good title suggestions there in the chat as well. A London call, maybe is the music could end uh, could end up being it. But yeah, whatever you're doing this weekend, uh, keep an eye out for us. I'm sure we'll be around. We'll all all say hello. Matty will take pictures. He won't even charge you. Maybe a fiver. You know, a bit like Oscar did with you, Matt. Bit of a, you know, it's a yeah. bit, isn't it? You know, it's still, still money. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you don't exist about. anymore. Does physical money exist? <laughs> it's all on card. I'll have to have a little tap machine to chat. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking would as well. <laughs> well, there you go. If you see Matty, make sure five of the five of pictures. But yeah, see any of us do say hello. Look forward to it. Uh, oh, of seeing course, all say hello. A Trinity as well. But yeah, folks, have a great weekend. Have a great week, and we will catch you next week for the big review. Ta-da. See you there. Good night, all. Thank you, patrons. Good night. <laughs>